We're back in Louisiana. Welcome to football this afternoon here on News Channel 8. The Wolfpack coming in with a 4-2 and two mark, but this is what the time they need one. They need one on the road against a team that's going to have an awful lot of offense to put in front of them, Dana. Louisiana Tech is 17th in the nation in total offense, so they can put a lot of points on the board. Last week against the University of Pacific, they scored 41 points, so they can really light up the scoreboard. And you can see it's great conditions for our GMC kickoff weather, 75 degrees. The, the wind, they say, at 5 miles an hour, but it's so slight, and humidity at 30% down here is virtually nothing. Chris Alt, a big smile on his face because you know he's enjoying the weather. One guy that the University of Nevada is going to miss today is a guy who had a twisted ankle last week, and we're not sure if he's going to play or not today. That's Ken Miner, the starting running back, and Paul Stewart is our man on the sideline to give us an update on his injury. Paul? Dan and Dana, uh, Ken Wilson will not play today in less of an emergency. I just talked to running back coach Billy Canfield, and he confirmed that Ken Miner will not be playing today. That means that Ernie Wilson gets his first start. The coaches feel that Wilson is an equal runner, uh, along with uh, uh, as good a runner as Miner. However, he is not as good a pass blocker. And of course, in Nevada's scheme of offense, that's very important. Back upstairs to you. Paul Stewart with that Cajun voice today. Too many crawfish last night. He was out eating fish, I know that, but he's struggling with that. He's been struggling with a, a flu for about 10 days, and it's just leaped into his throat right now. Paul, we hope that you're a lot better as this game progresses. Louisiana Tech did win the coin toss, and they did elect to receive the opening kickoff. So Nevada will kick off, and that's the position that Nevada likes to be in because they like to get the ball to start the third quarter. Interestingly enough, on the year for Louisiana Tech, the third quarter has been their least productive. They have three points on average in the third quarter. Damon Shea will kick off down to the eight-yard line. Good return out over the 25-yard line. Aaron Puckett with the return. So Tech, the Bulldogs, will go into action first and ten. Jason Martin, we talked about him in the pregame show, has 12 touchdowns, but one thing he does have is a very strong arm. This is a guy who's also thrown a lot of interceptions over his career, 37 times he's been picked off. Here's the opening backfield, and watch for Jason Armstrong. He's a guy who really likes to bang up the middle. Chad Mackey, the all-everything receiver, he's a great one, number four. So they mark it at the 28-yard line. Play action. Martin goes up top right away to his favorite guy, Mackey. And Mackey will get it inside the Wolfpack 45. The flag will be an accidental face mask. And right away, Louisiana Tech picks on that right corner. Mike Guider making his first college start, and the Tech Bulldogs go right after him on the opening play. Get a look at the starting front wall, the five guys that have got to give Martin some protection. Hampton, the center, 6'4", 255. David Miller, one of the guys that's going to try to stop that offense. He's played very well for the Wolfpack. The linebackers, Miles, leads the team in tackles with 77. And again, Mike Guider, we talked about him in the pregame show, but they go right after Guider playing that left corner, and Mackey with a big game. You guys need to back up. Please. You talked about the center there, Steve Hampton. He's not going to start this game because of a sore shoulder. Mike Boat's going to move over from the guard position to start for Hampton in this one. 33-yard pass completion, and we have whistles before the snap. So Nevada defense in a hole right away. They'll get a little help with the procedure call. Moves it back five yards. It'll be first and 15. First of all, as he does game in, game out, paces that sideline. Talking to him this morning, Danny said he wanted to keep the defense off the field, keep them fresh as long as he could. They're on defense here in this opening drive. His counterpart, Joe Raymond Peace, exhorting his offense. Martin, again Mackey, and Hassan pushes him out of bounds, but he's inside the 30 at the 26-yard line. Two plays and two catches by Chad Mackey last week against Pacific. He had 15 catches for 263 yards, and you'll see this M&M combination all afternoon long. Nice out, nice reception. He runs great routes. You get a good look at the camera from the north end zone. Hassan played him well. Mackey with that, again, because he runs such crisp outs, he makes the cut easily. 13 yards, another, well, they're short of the first down because of the penalty. The pitch 
and they'll be very close to the first down. That is Puckett again. Ball spotted at the 24. That should be enough for the first down. They're going to take a good look at it. You get a field eye view of the first down, and they're just a little bit short. So that'll bring up third and inches. And about two inches. Louisiana Tech started at their own 28-yard line. A big 33-yard completion, a 13-yard completion, and that short run, and you're up to date. So it'll be third and about two inches. Two wide receivers to the bottom of your screen. The third catch by Mackey. He's got the first down. Oh, boy. Had he been able to stay in bounds, he had Pater ahead of him, but just, just out of bounds. Well, they're picking on him early, aren't they? Chad Mackey, they're all everything receiver. 50 receptions on the season, and that's just a quick hitter out to the left flat, and he got some good blocking out in front of him. It almost turned the corner for a touchdown. If he hadn't have stepped out of bounds, he would have been in for the six. Got 16 yards, but Mackey lined up on that left side, as you saw in the replay. The end zone shot may not have shown it that clearly, but he took a step back from the line of scrimmage, was in the backfield when Martin could easily pick him out. Then he just ran, outran the secondary. Well, Martin does like something on first and goal, so he calls a timeout. Opening drive, 13.40 to play in the opening quarter. Tech with the ball first. They won the coin toss, and they said they want it right now. Well, they talked about an old-fashioned shootout here. Chris Alt versus Joe Raymond Peace on the sidelines. And Joe Raymond Peace this week said this could be the longest game in NCAA history because of the passing by both teams. He called this a bigger shootout than the OK Corral, more bombs than Pearl Harbor. So Joe Raymond Peace bringing out all the cliches this week and talking about this aerial field attack. And so far, it's lived up to his billing as Louisiana Tech has put the ball in the air a lot on their opening possession. And we talked in, uh, Dana, you and I were discussing before the ball game the balance that Louisiana Tech has shown this year, passing 51% and run 49, but this opening drive has been in the air. And Jason Martin has really come into his own as the quarterback of Louisiana Tech this season. Last two years, he threw almost twice as many interceptions as he did touchdowns. They've got Jason Armstrong now as a lone back. Ronnie Ostian had been in earlier. The arm fake, the throw in the end zone, too deep. That time, Francis Pagaro at the bottom of the end zone, uh, but if he caught it, he was going to be out of bounds. Mackey's having a big afternoon already in the opening drive. Three catches, 62 yards. Here, watch the nice arm fake out to the right side in the flat, and then Figaro open in the back of the end zone, but Martin just couldn't get it to him. Linebacker, I believe it was Miles that went by so fast, coming up quickly, or Miles or Porter ran right by, kind of anticipating on the, the arm fake, as you said, Dana and then Martin misses in the back of the end zone. Again to Mackey, that one he can't hang on. He just dropped it. Yeah, he did. It was it was right in the shoulder pads, and he was trying to move back to the outside, and he didn't have the ball tucked away. And you don't see this very often. Chad Mackey's a type of receiver that can make one-handed catches. You don't normally see him drop balls that are right in his chest like that one. That was a perfectly thrown football. So he was trying to spin back to his right side as we had a great angle at uh, ground level as he was trying to make the catch and spin away from the tackle all at once. Martin having a big day too, three of five, 62 yards in this opening drive. Remember, they started at their 28. Now they're third down at the Wolfpack nine. Martin for Mackey. He's got a touchdown. Mike Crawford coming in and saying Mackey had a knee down, but it looked like he extended the ball into the end zone as he hit the surface. And that's all you have to do is break the plane of the end zone, the goal line, with the nose of the football, and Mackey does that perfectly. They're giving him a big cushion out there. Miles has to come over for the linebacker spot, and that's Mike Guider trying to prevent him from getting into the end zone, but it didn't happen, and it's 6-0 Louisiana Tech. A lot of pressure on this Wolfpack defense, and so far, they haven't risen to it. Marty Kent to try the extra point. Right footer puts it right down the middle. 
So here in Ruston, Louisiana, Louisiana Tech scores on their opening drive. They go 72 yards. They're on top 7-0. We're back. Louisiana Tech goes 72 yards. As you see, they lead the Wolfpack. The pack has not gotten their hands on the ball. Alex Van Dyke, because of the start of Ernie Wilson, who's been returning kickoffs, is back the deep man for the Wolfpack, and the ball's headed his way. Five yards deep. He wants to bring it out. Boy, running laterally, they chase him down. And Van Dyke with that excellent speed, Marlon Ford would not let him get to the corner and turn it. Van Dyke started the year as the kickoff return guy for the Wolfpack. He broke one last year for a touchdown against Northern Illinois for 90 yards. But they didn't want Van Dyke returning kicks all year long because of the wear and tear it puts on their top receiver. So they had Ernie Wilson returning kicks. But today, Ernie Wilson starts in the backfield, so Van Dyke returns kicks. There's the number one quarterback in the country, Mike Maxwell. Under center of the Wolfpack coming from the sideline with a play already called. He's got Van Dyke open at the 24. Van Dyke tight roping the sideline and finally chased out. Van Dyke working on Willie Smith over there, their top cover guy. And Smith gave him a huge cushion that time. They don't want anything deep. Van Dyke, West, and Wilkins. Wilkins probably with the softest hands and Van Dyke the most explosive of the three. And then big Darren Thorpe, 300 pounder who has developed so well. He, the other side of the line, the weak side, is anchored by another 300 pounder. Moore, the key guy in the front four. First down, Wolfpack. Wilson, first carry, boy, runs into a man in the backfield and gets back to the line of scrimmage, maybe. The Wolfpack coaches here think they'll be able to run between the tackles today because the defensive line for Tech, in particular, their defensive ends are a little bit undersized and their linebackers as well. In fact, Lance Reed, the middle linebacker, only weighs 206 pounds. And then we talked about Willie Smith, of course, and he, an all-conference player, no doubt about that, with his interceptions. He's lined up against Alex Van Dyke, way to the bottom of your screen. If we, you see Van Dyke on the offensive side, with Smith in the backfield at the bottom of your screen, and Maxwell wants to throw on second. He's got McHenry. And they gang tackle McHenry down as he gets about five yards after the catch. Derek Parker the first to hit him. Wolfpack's only thrown two times in this game, but both times their wide receivers have been wide open. McHenry has a huge cushion over the middle, starting at tight end. Of course, this was the slot receiver last year, but due to all the injuries, he's had to play some tight end this season. He's done a very fine job blocking and, of course, catching the football for a big gain over the middle. Look at all those blue shirts come after Parker hangs on. At the Tech 47-yard line, a Wolfpack first down. The 19-yard catch by McHenry. A little swing pass. They set up Van Dyke. He comes right. Smith grabs him and hangs on to enough jersey to get him out of bounds at the 40. There's something a little different wrinkle than we have seen. Nevada's thrown a lot of uh, wide receiver screens or middle screens. That time, Van Dyke circling out of the backfield to the right side. You get a look at it. Wolfpack's just trying to use his speed. They're trying to get him the football with some room to run because of all his speed. And even though it didn't look like much, you see Smith hanging onto the jersey. Otherwise, Van Dyke has got a lot more. He got seven on that one. Quick count. Wilson running left. He runs into Washington, and he, Washington slows him up long enough where they can gang tackle again. Lance Reed is in there. We talked to assistant head coach Jeff Tisdale last night about how they would change the offense with Ken Miner out of the lineup and Ernie Wilson starting today. And he said, we're not going to change it at all. Ernie Wilson could do everything that Ken Miner can do. So far, he hasn't had any running room at all. The passing game's clicking, but the running game is being stuffed. Nevada now with a third and two. Paul Stewart mentioned that the only thing you, you lose when you put a Wilson in for Miner is some blocking, but Maxwell so adept at feeling the pressure if he doesn't see it. Max with the post pattern complete. That'll get the first down inside the 30. That says a lot about the Wolfpack's thinking, I think, in this game. Third and short, and instead of running the ball, they're throwing the ball. So they have confidence in the pass. Right now, I'm not sure they have a lot of confidence in the run. But to open up the pass, you have to continue to keep that defense honest. So they'll continue to run the ball, I'm sure. But they'll rely on the pass heavily this afternoon here. Louisiana Tech, in case you just joined us, you get a Good look at the head coach for the Bulldogs. Went 72 yards in the opening drive. Wolfpack trying to mount their own drive from their own 18. Maxwell got Wilkins, but underthrows him. 
Parker gets back. Wilkins was open, and Max under a gallop just let it go a little too softly. Wilkins had about five yards on the DB out there. Number one, Derek Parker, the 5'11", 180-pound sophomore, couldn't keep up with Wilkins that time. Wilkins had about five yards on him, and it looks like Max just tried to aim that ball in there instead of just throwing it. Should have been picked off. Yeah, broken up. So it'll be second and 10. Ball at the Tech 28 yard line. Again, Maxwell on a quick look in. Hits Wilkins and the sure hands of Wilkins makes the catch and they push him backward. But the forward progress will get him about seven. Caught that ball right in front of the free safety 44 Eric Starks. The leading tackler on Louisiana Tech with 67 tackles a season. In fact, their top two tacklers are both defensive backs, which I don't think bodes well for the Tech defense. You want your linebackers making the majority of the tackles. On the uh, Nevada side of the ball, their top three tacklers are all linebackers. Wilkins got six, not seven, on a quick count, third and four. Again, Wilkins gets to the 19, and boy, Willie Smith comes up and makes a great hit. He is just short of the first down, and that'll bring up a decision time now for the Wolfpack offense. It'll be fourth and short. Well, Nevada this year has gone on fourth down six times. They have converted four of those. And they knew they needed a few yards here, and Wilkins thought he would be able to get it coming around that corner, but a great stick by Willie Smith. He loves to tackle and put the hat on somebody, and they're going to go for it. Fourth and a yard. They have completed two-thirds of these attempts so far this year. Or is Maxwell going to try to freeze him? No. Nope. Miller moves the pile, or Wilson moves the pile. Should have it up. I think he does. He just had to get across the 18-yard line. It looks like he fell forward for it. The Wolfpack has been tough this season on their opening drive. We told you earlier they've scored four of the six times in opening drives this season and in the blue zone inside the 20-yard line where they are now they've had the ball 38 times this season and scored 28 touchdowns Wolfpack offense really clicks when they smell blood Ernie Wilson you get a shot of him starting in place of the injured Kenny Miner Wolfpack on the west side line as Maxwell checking over the defense Pack with two tight ends this time. Max throws, ball intercepted. And he waited. Maxwell caught the arm, waited for the receiver to open. And Willie Smith has his seventh interception this year. He's averaging one a game. He's only, this is his seventh game. He missed a game due to an injured right knee. He missed the New Mexico State game. And I think you're right. Was it Smith or, or Crockett? Smith. Smith makes a pick right here. It is. It is 33 Willie Smith, not 37 Crockett. So Nevada drives from their own 18. They give it up at the four, a long drive, but no points. They trail 7-0. And you see the displeasure on the face of head coach Chris Alt, the opposite side. Joe P saying, we got away that time. First down 10 for the Bulldogs and the Bulldog four-yard line. They went 72 yards. They now would have to go 96. On the ground, boy, G uh, Canada right there to make the stop on Armstrong about the line of scrimmage. And that is unlike Mike Maxwell the last two weeks. He has thrown 11 touchdowns and only one interception. He has been hotter than a pistol the last couple of weeks. But today in the opening drive, he kills a Wolfpack drive. Second and maybe a yard. The other thing is the Wolfpack defense is back out there, although they got a rest. About six minutes, but they're back out there. They'd like this to be a short drive. Martin on a three-step drop. Again, his favorite guy, Mackey. Hassan knocks him out of bounds. He'll be short of the first down. He is short by about a couple. So that'll bring up a third and short for Louisiana Tech. Mackey's been his favorite guy today. He's caught 50 Jason Martin balls this season. And the Wolfpack defense giving him a big cushion out there. Hassan trying to keep everything in front of him. Spotted at the 12. They need to go to the 14 for a first down. So third and two. The eight-yard pickup by Mackey. On the ground, boy, that time David Miller got him at the 10-yard line. Miller converging at the, the ball carrier. That's a big stop because Nevada now will, they will get the punt. Juan Gibbons will be in in single safety. 
the Nevada defense gets a break, they get to come off the field. It's a very big stop because Louisiana Tech may be the worst punting team in the nation. They are 95th in net punting this season. They have two guys that they flip-flop because neither one has done the job for them. Jason Kane averaging 36.3. Standing off five yards deep in his end zone. Good snap. Gets it away at the goal line. Boy, that he got his foot into that one. Gibbons looking into the sun. Takes it at the 40. Ran into one of his own blockers back there. And look at the face mask holding on. That, that's uh, Rudy. Who had his face mask held on. I didn't see any flags now. But Matt showed him out of the Minden Gardnerville area, downfield trying to block, and they were had him by the face mask. Nickname of Rudy. Guy is a little bit undersized for the Division I game, but he is tougher than nails. And here is a face mask right in the middle of your screen there. Boy, well, talk about the, you know, a borderline call or no call. Nevada at their own 49-yard line. Draw to Wilson. Nice move to get away from the first hit, and he will get to the 45, so a six-yard gain by Ernie Wilson. Early on in the contest, we were watching Dana on the sideline when Mackey made a catch. When, no, excuse me, Van Dyke made a catch, and there was a lot of join going on. There is a lot of talking going on down there because these teams just talking at one another, trying to intimidate the other side. 7-0 Louisiana Tech, 7-18 remaining in the first quarter. Mike Maxwell, 6 of 8 on the day, 60 yards but that one critical interception. But the Wolfpack has the ball. They're back in Tech territory with a chance to tie this one up. Maxwell, right side for Van Dyke. Nice move. Smith was closing quickly. The catch made at the 40-yard line, but Van Dyke actually came back to the ball to protect it from being knocked down by Willie Smith. And they're catching a lot of balls underneath the coverage right now. I wouldn't be surprised to see Van Dyke do the down, out, and then back up again and try to burn these guys long. But they're going to try to weaken, soften that defense a little bit by going underneath right now. Smith not letting anything get by him, but Van Dyke is going to make that catch all day long if they give it to him. Van Dyke coming in averaging 10 catches a ball game. Nevada moves the sticks at the 40-yard line of Tech, first and 10. Wilson. He will get a tough five to the 35. They've been all tough today on the ground, haven't they? Wilson's the kind of guy, what we've seen of him, Dana, if he gets his hands on the ball, he's one of those typical backs, you give it to him enough times, he seems to find the hole, get loose, and the more he gets it, the better he seems to play. Here's a guy who only had 36 carries coming into this game for 173 yards on the year, but he's gaining about five yards in attempt. They think he's a very quality running back, and probably he's the heir apparent next year for Ken Miner. Second and five. Wilson again. Boy, ran right in to Shannon Jenkins at the line of scrimmage, the guy we showed in our pregame show. Jenkins would not give ground, and that was a big hit right at the 35. Well, we talked about those undersized linebackers, and Jenkins is another one. He's only 5'11", 208 pounds. Ernie Wilson is almost as big as this guy. He's number three from the right side of your screen. But although he's undersized, he sure can make a hit. He grabs some cloth and get Wilson right there. So they're maybe a little bit undersized, but they're tough. Wilson did the, the thing. Here you get a look at Jenkins. The thing a running back does when you make contact, trying to spin off and get loose in case they haven't wrapped up. Third and five. Van Dyke, fingertip catch. Nice straight arm of Smith. Van Dyke at the 20. He will be pushed out of bounds, and the official will go down at the same time, but it will be very, very close as Parker coming across. The strong safety just got Van Dyke out of bounds before the end zone. Looks like they're going to mark him out at about the three-and-a-half-yard line, and it looked like he was going to be able to turn on the Jets and get in the end zone, but they had the angle on him. Here, this time, he gets away from the tackle of Willie Smith. All afternoon, Smith has been able to wrap him up, but not here. Van Dyke, very elusive, gets down the sideline, knocked out at about the three-and-a-half yard line. Good call Watch by it. the official on that side. Well, that didn't go long enough, but we had another look at it. Watch the official go down right at the end of the play. On the right side of your screen, that guy in the black hat, the official, gets wiped out. So Nevada with a first and goal at the four-yard line. They trail. They go with their wing tee. Two running backs in. Dawson trips in the backfield. He'll go down at the seven-yard line. Dennis and Dawson just inserted in what they call heavy or war with a wing tee. Dennis has had a fairly tough year. Coming into the game, he's had 11 carries for 16 yards. He'll lose a pair on that one. So on the year, he has 12 carries 
for 14 yards. He's averaging about one yard a carry this season. Yeah, lost three at the seven yard line. Still goal to go. This time seven yards away as Max looking at the secondary, trying to pick up the safeties where they're playing. They stay in their wing team. Good play fake. Maxwell waiting for somebody to clear. Nobody came out. He threw it away. He was waiting, I believe, for McHenry to come across, and Maxwell just threw that one away wisely. He only had one receiver in the pattern in the end zone. That was McHenry. He came across, and he was covered. After that, there was no one else open. He had plenty of time to throw the football, but nowhere to throw it. Now it's third and goal. Well, we want you to stay with us all afternoon long and all evening. Football, and then followed immediately by the World Series. Cleveland and Atlanta. Should be a great one. later. Oh, boy. Game one, you got Mike Maddox, probably the best pitcher in baseball. is going to win his fourth straight Cy Young Award this year against Oral Hershiser mm. in his resurgent career. That's coming up right after football this afternoon on Channel 8. Nevada with three wide receivers to the left of the formation. Max on a slant. Touchdown, Wilkins. Wow. He didn't hang on. It looked like he did from our vantage point, but they knocked it away at the last second. And here comes Damon Shea, the field goal kicker, to try to get the Wolfpack on the scoreboard. They trail 7-3 with 4.29 remaining in the first quarter. Wilkins comes to the right side of your screen, number five. It looked like he had it right in his arms, but it was batted away at the last second by Crockett, I believe. 24-yard field goal attempt. Shea has made all five so far this year. His long is 30. Kick is up, and... It is good. So Nevada gets back. Tech scored first. They're on top, 7-3. to three. We're in Ruston, Louisiana. We'll be right back. Here in Ruston, Louisiana, the Wolfpack will kick off after getting a 24-yard field goal. So they're on the scoreboard, but they trail 7-3 with 4.24 remaining in the first quarter. 17 years ago on this date... Frank Hawkins rushed for 134 yards and set an NCAA record with eight straight 100-yard games. As Nevada beat Santa Clara 38 to six, and you announced that game. Yeah, and it was a split emotions for me because uh, I'm an alum of Santa Clara. That was the last time the Broncos played the Wolfpack, and they came up and, uh, as you see on the score, 38 to six, they flat got thumped. Nevada just shut their running game down. The Broncos could go nowhere. Wolfpack goes nine plays, 44 yards, and 322, and culminates in a field goal. They trail 7-3 with 424 to go. Shea with a helicopter kick, and he kicks it way out of bounds on the sideline. So Louisiana Tech will get it at their 35, and Shea, you see him shaking his head. He wanted it that way, but not that deep. And he's done the job all season. They had big questions in their kicking game coming into the year, but Damon Shea has really produced. In fact, we have a halftime feature on Damon Shea coming up. Chris Gargano interviewed him at practice this week, and we'll have that interview with Damon Shea coming up at halftime for you. That's one of the few times all year he hasn't got the job done on the kickoff. Yeah, he's not pleased about it because Tech now with a, a, a first and 10 at their own 35. Nevada had a three downs and out last time for their defense. This one they throw it to Jackson who fumbles and we have a flag down, but he got it back before going out of bounds. Hassan did a great job that time of turning the play inside so he could get interior help from the Wolfpack linebackers that time. Dean Jackson, number eight, great receiver. Last year he caught 62 balls. He was uh, 14th in the nation in catches. And watch Hassan turn this play inside. He makes Jackson turn inside, gets a hand on the ball, Jackson actually coughed it up for a moment and got it back before he got help from Garnett Overby and uh, Lamont Porter. But you're right, Hassan talking to the official right now, reached in and got that ball loose and with a man in front of him blocking him, made a tremendous effort. I think incidental face mask against Hassan and they'll move it another five yards. It's at the 45 yard line, first and 10 for Tech. And there, right there, I believe is where he got the face mask. But talk about a borderline call. Yeah. I mean, he just, the hand was up there. He got more and more football than he did match. Play action by Martin. On a comeback, he misses wide out of bounds. Cedric Williams with his hands on it. Tech working to Mike Guider's side again. The JC All-American pressed into action. There's a lot of pressure on Mike Guider. A lot of pressure, I think, on the defense put on by Chris Salt. He wants his defense to win some football games for him this year. And he's talked to Mike Gilhammer, the defensive coordinator this week, and said, hey, we got to get it done this week. They didn't play well last week. They have to get it done this week, and there's a lot of pressure on the defensive unit. 
I thought we would see some blitzing, but they're not doing it. The other thing is, if you blitz and like Martin taking a three-step drop, it doesn't do you any good to blitz anyway. On the ground, Billy Thomas will get it near midfield. We've got another flag down. I'm sorry, Jason Armstrong, not Thomas. He comes up limping a little bit. Armstrong is their leading running back this year. They can ill afford to lose him. Holding on Louisiana Tech. So that'll help Nevada out. Big time. That'll push it back 10 yards. We expected a Tech would run the ball a lot more, but with the success they've had in the air, they lead 7-3. Why not stay up top? Hey, they saw the film last week, too, against Northeast Louisiana, and Northeast Louisiana threw all day on the Wolfpack, so why not? Joe Raymond Peace, who was a linebacker here playing in the 60s, back to coach his alma mater. Martin, that time Guider came up, and I, Mackey makes an outstanding catch, but Mike Guider was right there as the ball got there. Just missed it with his right hand and then held on long enough to bring Mackey down. Martin now 7 of 9 for 91 yards in the afternoon. He's having a big day and the recipient of most of those passes, number 4, Chad Mackey. Guider did a great job. Looked like he was going to get his hand in there. He came on quickly and he did get his hand in there, but he just whiffed on the ball. Yeah, that, that's concentration on Mackey's side. Guider makes a nice play, as you said, Dana, on the comeback, but the concentration by number 4, Mackey. Brings up a third. And 10, and Mackey, that time, I think it was deflected by Miles. It was. Got a hand on it, and Mackey couldn't control it. So, once again, the Wolfpack defense, with a good stand, that, that penalty, it made it a first and 17. They held Tech, and now the dogs have to kick it away. So, Tech scores on their opening drive. They go length of the field. They score seven points, but on their ensu ensuing two possessions, Tech was stuffed by the Wolfpack defense, so they're forced to punt again. Kane, who was averaging 36, had a great punt last time. We'll do it again. Gets a lot of air under it. Gibbons back at his four. Got away from the first hit, but didn't get any farther than the 10. So we're in the first quarter with 255. Tech leads the Wolfpack 7-3. We'll return to Louisiana after this timeout. Here in Louisiana, you see the coaching staff for the Wolfpack just to our right down the way in the coach's box. Chris Kanakis with his chin in his hand and then Mike Gilhammer on the phone. And we talked about the World Series, Dana. Game one of the World Series coming up immediately following this broadcast. We'll have game one of baseball right after football. So I think you're going to be with us for about six, seven hours today here on Channel 8. If you know it's good for you. <laughs> Mike Maxwell on the offense, back out at their own 10-yard line. In case you just joined us, the pack trailing 7-3. Maxwell intercepted once at the goal line at the other guy's goal line. Wilson will get out to the 13. The Wolfpack has scored 47% of the time that they've touched the football this season. 47%, almost half. And in the last three games, make that two-thirds, 63%, almost two-thirds of the time they touch the football. You know, I was looking at the numbers that you're talking about, and when you consider the fact that at the end of ball games they ran out the time without trying to score, if you, if you deduct those, they have actually scored 49%, almost one out of two. Second and eight, Max looked off the primary, goes back to Van Dyke, a good catch in traffic. Smith hits him first, and then Wilford Carter. Seven-yard gain for Van Dyke. That'll bring up a third and short for the Wolfpack. And they put a lot of pressure on this Louisiana Tech defense. But then again, that's nothing new for the Wolfpack. Van Dyke and company have put pressure on defenses all season long. They're third in the nation in total offense. Don't forget, coming up at halftime, all the latest scores and highlights with Chris Gargano on the Moy Distributing Halftime Report. It'll be third down. After that six-yard catch by Van Dyke, third and two. Again, a post. That's Wilkins. And finally run down by Carter. But Damon Wilkins trying to straight-arm Carter Wilford with that bummed-up left hand gets up holding it. Wilford Carter saved the touchdown that time. 
Little post route, third and short, and the Wolfpack just dumps it off inside underneath the coverage. Wilkins has a lot of speed, and he gets across midfield before Carter just wraps him up and makes the touchdown saving tackle. 33 yard gain. Tech had one on their first play to Mackey, and now Wilkins has come back and matched him. Boy, does he have soft hands. You got a good look at him right there. Hard break by Max. There's the stop and go to Van Dyke. Alex will be out of bounds. Dana, you called that much earlier because the corners have been cheating up. And Max with a perfect arm fake, and then Van Dyke takes off. They've been going underneath all day long and on uh, Willie Smith over there. And this time, they went down, out, the pump fake, and Smith pit on it. And he got past the safety on that side. In fact, if he would have stayed in bounds, he could have got a few more yards. But the Wolf Pack's in business again inside what they call the blue zone. From what I've heard from Paul Stewart, the sports information director. And when they get inside the blue zone, they score. So Van Dyke with his seventh catch now has 109 yards. We'll talk about those numbers. Wilson, boy, nowhere to go up the middle. They had that plugged off. Wilson, the defense the just digging the in the middle of that bulldog of the of the unit, and they just won't give any ground. You know, I said earlier the Wolfpack was going to have to run the ball to keep the defense honest. I'm not so sure they're going to run it that much anymore. It just hasn't been working. Well, not inside anyway. If they want to get outside, get some blocks, get Cooper or LeGraff on the, on the corner to, to kick some people out. But the traffic up the middle is very heavy, and there's not any room at all. No gain for Wilson. At the 15-yard line, it is second down. Play fake. Touchdown, Wolfpack. Touchdown, Wolfpack. Wilkins, I was watching him downfield. He made a very quick head fake as, he, as if he was going to go post inside, then turned around. Max waited for him to clear and then threaded it. I don't know if you're going to believe this or not, but Mike Maxwell is 12 of 16. He's at 75% of his passes for 185 yards, and we're still in the first quarter. What a perfectly thrown ball that time. It wasn't that bad of coverage. He was a step behind him. It was just a perfectly thrown ball. She threw it to the outside shoulder, and that's why the defensive man had no opportunity to knock it down. The extra point attempt by Shea is up and good. He's converted 31 in a row, and Nevada leads for the first time this afternoon with 29 seconds remaining. We'll take a timeout. We'll be back to Ruston. The pack on top, 10-7. You see, just seconds remain in the first quarter. Nevada has finally gone out on top on a 90-yard drive. They started at their own 10 and capped it off with a touchdown. Football coming your way Monday as the Buffalo Bills battle the New England Patriots on Monday Night Football at 6 o'clock, and the Patriots are actually favored in that ball game. Uh, you know, they were expected to have a good year, and the Bills a, a mediocre year, and it's turned out so far the other way. Pack drove 90 yards in that last position at 226. Jay's kick will be returned from the six-yard line. Dogs will get it out to the 23. James Crockett on the return. He's only returned two kicks coming into the game. That was his third one. Most of the time, they like Jonathan Maxwell to return their kicks, but Crockett got it that time. Nevada with two good defensive stops in the first quarter, and that's really important for their defense, as we continue to mention, because they're thin in the down four, and uh, they want to keep those guys as fresh as they can. Again, recapping only six plays, Mike Maxwell driving the Wolfpack 90 yards and Wilkins with a 15-yard touchdown reception. Play fake. Underneath the ball dropped by Armstrong. As Martin using, he's going to the air obviously, number 10, the quarterback, a lot today, but using a play fake to slow the Wolfpack linebackers should they be blitzing and the pack has decided at least in the first quarter, not the blitz. They don't throw to the running back a lot here at Tech. Armstrong's only caught nine balls all season for 103 yards. That's about one a game. They played seven games this year. So they throw to him a little bit, although he had a huge gainer against Tulsa. He had a catch and run for 45 yards against Tulsa, and most of that was on his own. A little bit surprised they haven't thrown to their six foot seven tight end. On a slant, Mackey again with great hands goes down to the surface at the 30 yard line. Well, at number four, Longview, Texas. They take their football serious in this part of the country, and even more so in Texas. You can see why he is here, competitive. You talked about their big tight end, number 86, Josh Bradley, second on the team in receptions this year with 22. Well, it's the end of the quarter. The Wolfpack leads 10 7. We'll be back to Louisiana.
You get a look, a split screen look at both head coaches. Joe, Joe Raymond Peace. Peace played linebacker here for Louisiana Tech back in the early 60s for Joe IA, the guy who the stadium is named for. And Chris Alt played for Nevada back in the mid 60s, as most people know, as a quarterback. And there's the offensive coordinator for Louisiana Tech, Gary Croton. And a lot of the credit goes to him for this resurgent offense. They're scoring 10 more points a game this year than they did last year. And Croton is a big reason for that. Jason Martin has also matured as a quarterback. Another big reason. Croton upstairs, the guy in the middle there doing all the talking on the headset. But whatever he's been saying, the offense has been responding. It'll be third down, third and three. Tech at their own 30-yard line. They move the formation in, the two wide receivers tight to the formation. And Martin, underneath the catch made the 35, that will be Jackson. That's his second catch this afternoon. Dean Jackson, third on the team in receptions, coming into the game with 21. He was recruited by Northwestern, in fact, went to Northwestern before transferring here to Louisiana Tech, and he just gets underneath the defense that time, enough for the first down. It's hard to cover all those guys. They sent about five guys into the pattern that time, and Jackson was open enough for the first down. Looked like they were moving the receivers in from the top of the formation to for a little more blocking on that third and short, but they go up top. 15-yard gain at their own 45. Armstrong threading his way to the 48. And while Louisiana Tech has had some success through the air, not much on the ground so far during this game, the Wolfpack defense is 15th in the nation against the run, only giving up 109 yards a game. Tech does like to run. You mentioned their balance attack. They average more than 200 yards a game on the ground, so something's got to give. It doesn't look like they're going to get a lot of yards on the ground today, does it? It looks like they're going to go through the air, mainly. Both have had trouble running on the ground. The gain of three, second and seven. Two wide receivers just out of your screen to the left side of your screen. As Martin again throws over the middle and Overby playing it well will only give him a two-yard gain. And there we see the Wolfpack defense blitz a little bit, trying to put a little bit of pressure on Jason Barton, hoping that he'll have to dump the ball a little bit sooner than he'd like to. John Payua came from the left corner, or the left uh, linebacker spot that time, number 49. You can see the intensity in the Wolfpack defense. They were criticized last week for not being intense in the second half. They are uptight and in the face of the Bulldogs. There's been receptions made, but they're made to pay for it. Third and about five. Again, that little wide receiver screen. They've got enough for the first down. That's Spencer Hurd. He is a dinky one. He is five feet, nine inches tall, 177 pounds soaking wet. He's only made seven catches coming into the season, but he's a tough guy. So Martin moves the sticks again up top. Nevada defense looked like they had held because of the third and five. Martin found a way as he has. Wolfpack leading 10-7. Tech scoring first on a 72-yard drive. The pitch. Billy Thomas, who doesn't carry the ball very often, but averages almost five yards a carry, goes out of bounds in front of his own bench. Don't forget, immediately following this game, we'll have game one of the World Series between the Braves and the Indians. That's coming up right after football here on News Channel 8. See Maddox and Albert Bell, two of the key performers. Bell with 50 home runs this year in only 144 games. That's amazing. Yes, it is, like the old days. Second and six after Thomas got four on the run. Nobody in the backfield. Wolfpack puts on pressure. They throw it complete to Mackey. He's going to go all the way. Chad Mackey that time on a, what's called a wide receiver middle screen had two linemen in front of him, and they were just a convoy. He ran right by him. The pack said everybody. They sent all three linebackers, and Deshaun Miles is holding his left arm at about the 10-yard line on the field right now. Miles is hurt, but he stays in the game. The Wolfpack sends three guys. They rush seven, and they only had four guys back, and everyone was blocked. He had a convoy into the end zone. It was easy pickets for Mackey. That's how you run that wide receiver middle screen. And Mackey 
has 142 yards receiving in the first half. And set a record last week with 263. The extra point is up and good, and Tech kicks the top 14 to 10. We've got 12:33 going in the second quarter. We're at Ruston, Louisiana. Stay with us. You're watching the head football here on News Channel 8, and Dana, there's a huddle in the conversation. I'd like to hear Ken Wilson, Kenny Wilson, out in front of the defensive unit talking to him. Yeah, there's some concern on that defensive side of the football right now. It's a track meet, and they've given up a couple of touchdowns. Louisiana Tech, the defense can have to play better. This kick will be returned. I think it will bounces, and finally at the seven-yard line, Van Dyke wants a reverse field, come back the other way, and he can't outrun him. He'll get to the 11, and that'll be it. Van Dyke on the we had trouble right off the bang there when he let the ball bounce, and it went almost over his head. He was lucky to keep that ball in front of him. Guy celebrating Francis Figaro coming to the sideline. He stayed in his lane, and that's what's important about guys on special teams staying right in his lane, and maybe we'll get a look at it. Now, if he makes this catch, if he comes up and makes that catch, he gets a big gainer out of it, but he instead lets it drop, and it took a while for the ball to come down, and by then, the defense, the special teams were all on him. There comes Figaro. Great. Stays around the in lane. I think what happened to Van Dyke, the man in front of him, Dawson, looked like he was going to drift back and catch the ball, and he didn't. Tech goes the 72 yards with Mackey capping it off with that uh, wide receiver screen. Maxwell rolling on play action, throws on a comeback. Nice catch by West, and finally Starks will drop him near the 30-yard line. Wolfpack has so many weapons, and they've used Alex Van Dyke extensively here in the first half. This time they go to Cornell West side. He has 32 catches coming into the game. That'll give him 33 now on the season. Max again holding everybody by with that play fake, and West wisely coming back to his quarterback. At their 29-yard line, the pack first and 10. Maxwell stumbled, but got it to Wilson anyway. Nice block downfield by West. Let's Wilson turn the corner, and Wilson with a great run. It was the wide receiver, West, who maintained contact with a corner, and Wilson went outside with a great speed and got around. He sure did. He didn't try to juke anybody. He just tried to outrun everyone, and he did a great job. Maxwell barely got the ball to him. It looked like he stumbled after he got the handoff from Jeff Hadwick, and he got a great block to spring him around the left hand, and Ernie Wilson showed why they're very excited about him here. They're not trying to run. It doesn't look like between the tackles right now. It looks like they're going to try to get outside and make something happen. He does a great job of tight roping down the sideline here. The only thing Wilson didn't do, the coach is going to remind him Monday, is move the ball to your left hand. He was running with the ball with the inside hand, and that's time when you get popped and you cough it up. So he goes 33 yards. At the Tech 39, Max going to work. Nice play by Starks. The free safety came in front of Wilkins and got there when the ball got there and knocked it loose. That was just great timing by Starks. He timed it as soon as the ball got there. He got there, and Wilkins had no chance to catch that one. Starks, as we mentioned, has 67 tackles coming into the game and one interception. A great job. Uh, there's no way Wilkins could hold on to that ball. The collision was too violent. Tech Tech. At the 39-yard line of Louisiana Tech, we're in the second quarter. Tech leading 14-10. McHenry split out as a wide receiver. Makes the catch. I was watching him all the way, Dana, because he normally used to tie it in. This time they had moved him to the left of the formation all alone. And I don't think Tech was used to seeing him out there. He kind of caught the defense napping a little bit. Well, here's a guy that is a wide receiver, converted wide receiver to tie it in. And that was a perfectly thrown ball right over the corner. And in that seam in between the corner and the safety on that side. See, Crockett normally would pick him up, the corner, but... McHenry, who is a wide receiver, Nevada's going with their what they call quads, four receivers now, two to the right and two to the left. Wilson shakes a tackle. He's starting to shake and bake now as he's at the nine-yard line. He ran through the first hip in the first quarter. He couldn't run through that initial tackle. Well, they were they were running up the middle before. Now they're running stretch is what they call it when they try to run around the tackles, get some blocking outside, and he's doing a great job of running on his own. That time somebody had him around the ankles, but he shook the tackle. Place designed to go to the right side, nothing open over there, so he takes it around the left where there was something open. 
Second and about two, the ball at the nine yard line of Louisiana Tech. This time they go back to McHenry, a tight end. They throw a drag at five yard line to Van Dyke, he'll score. Boy, McHenry came back and put a great block, I believe, on Crockett. James Crockett, who was coming in, McHenry had gone back to the tight end position, gone down the seam, comes back, and you'll see the block he lays for Van Dyke. Boy. Number 87, left side of your screen, lays out James Crockett. There's 37. Watch him go down. They call that a pancake. And if they still give out the bricks, he'll get one in this week. They used to give out bricks for blocks like that. They have the face of light, uh, big block award. He, but, but I'll tell you, McHenry might get that one. Shea still good with his extra points. Nevada goes back out on top. 17 to 14, we have 10.56 to play in the second quarter. We're coming back, so stay with us. Just in my life, it's so hard. I need a photo opportunity. I want a shot with them. We are here at the Nugget to determine whether the new Gabe's Pub and Deli is more exciting as a pub and deli or because it's Reno's best race and sports book. We're measuring Galvanic... Get another play, a uh, look at that touchdown play. You saw number 58 in the middle of your screen. That's Lance Reed, middle linebacker. Myron Smith, another linebacker. We're caught in a blitz that time, which left the middle wide open for Alex Van Dyke to score the touchdown. Yeah, and he's going to, you know, that they're talking on the sideline. He's thanking Steve McHenry because McHenry, Crockett didn't even see him coming. Nevada, again, a long drive. They went 90 before. This time they go 89. Mike Maxwell, 5 of 20 for 232 yards, and we still have 11 minutes left in the first half. The helicopter kick will be taken back at the 3-yard line. And you can mark it at the 17. Don't forget, coming up at halftime, all the latest scores and highlights with Chris Gargano on the Boy Distributing Halftime Report. He'll have an interview with Damon Shea who's done a super job with the kicking game this year for the Wolfpack. He's been one of the big surprises this year, one of the big pleasant surprises for Coach Chris Alton Company. Puckett on the return, but the hit by Don Morgan really drove Puckett sideways and stopped him right there. And it will be at the 17, first and 10. Tech on the ground, but Miller is waiting on Armstrong and makes the initial contact and limits it to a two-yard gain. And then Crawford was there to pick up the pieces and knock him down. Get a look at big number 96. Well, now he's got his hands on his knees, so you don't get a real good shot at him because he's a little bit winded. But he's the anchor of that middle. He and Canada along with Hall. Now you got a shot at him from your end zone camera. No, Maxwell isn't the only one having a big day. Jason Martin, 12 of 17, 162 yards and two touchdowns. They talked about this one being an aerial war and so far it has. As expected. Fake the reverse. Martin with great time going up field. He's got Armstrong, and Armstrong drop. Oh, boy. Huh. Armstrong couldn't have been any more wide open, and he's thinking about it. Armstrong used to be a quarterback, so he's used to handling the ball. Look at Martin. What do you think he's thinking? <laughs> I think we all know what he's thinking, and I don't think we could print it. Jason Armstrong was a quarterback in high school and even played some quarterback last year for Louisiana Tech. He did a great job of play fake that time. They faked the, the handoff up to the, the halfback, and they also faked the handoff to Mackey, the end, who was coming around on the reverse. Wolfpack got caught up in that, forgot all about Jason Armstrong, who was coming out of the backfield to catch a pass. Four ride receivers, one to the top of your screen, three to the bottom. Martin wants to throw that middle screen to his wide receiver Jackson Jackson threading a needle will get near the first down boy he should have gone down about three yards before that but got loose Pack says there's a fumble on the play and they say they have the ball but I'm not sure the referees are saying the same thing get a look at Dean Jackson getting up slowly now the Wolfpack makes the tackle on that one they had two chances at him they stop him short of the first down but the pack continues to miss tackles and that just kills you in a football game there, the ball comes loose, and it looked like it came loose before his knee was down. It looks like that should be the Pack's football. Yeah, it was Clint Peterson who's been hurt who came in and made that good, solid hit. But the Pack will not get it, and uh, Tech will get a first and ten. Clock moves with 9.40 to play in the second quarter. Nevada coming all the way across country. Right now they lead 17-14, but this one can change at any time. 
Thomas gets out of a short tackle, and now it's a foot race. Oh, what a, a tackle on the sideline, and I think it's David Miller. Am I, or is that Miles? First James Johnson, number two in the middle of your screen, comes in and has a chance to make the tackle on this play. He'll come back into your screen. He'll come from the left side, but he takes the wrong angle this time on Thomas. He cut inside and a great tackle that time. You see the Johnson trailing the play. He could have made the tackle. It's hard to tell who made that tackle. We yeah. couldn't see the number. I saw a six, but that's all I could see. At midfield, again, Thomas running, spinning, and getting a tough four. Thomas. Mike Crawford got it. Louisiana Tech uses three backs extensively at that halfback position. Armstrong, Lee Ragsdale, and Billy Thomas. We haven't seen Ragsdale yet today. He has a sore hamstring, and it won't prevent him from playing, but it is a little bothersome, so we may not see him this afternoon. But Thomas gets a lot of carries in the backfield, too. So they have three guys, three weapons that they can go to. Justin Tenpenny is in defensively for the Wolfpack in their front four. Talk a little bit more about that on a second and six. Again, play action by Martin. He's hit as he throws, incomplete. You notice Tawan Hall. Tawan Hall came in and buried him. Martin looking now, getting some assistance to get up. But Tawan coming from the left defensive side with a speed rush came all the way around and got Martin right after he threw it. The wait is over. Don't miss the explosive Caesar premiere of NYPD Blue this Tuesday night at 10 o'clock right here on News Channel 8. We'll take another look. Here comes 42, Tawan Hall. Boy, a step late, but Martin felt it. Great job at uh, field level. Tech 5 of 7 on third down conversion. Third and 6. Martin got a man on the sideline. Oh, what, what a catch. Overby was waiting for the ball, and Figueroa went up and took it away. There's Overby on the surface, but Garnett thought he had a pick. He was waiting for the ball to come down, and all of a sudden, Figueroa came in the picture. And Garnett gets up very slowly. It looks like he twisted either his right knee or his right ankle, but it looks like he'll stay in the football game. But you're right. He looked like a center fielder just waiting for a can of corn to come down, and it looked like Overby was going to make this interception for the left side. But Figaro just beat him to the football. It looked like Garnett was just a little lackadaisical at that time instead of being aggressive and going for the football. But that ball was just laid up right there for Garnett. Another big gain, a 25-yarder. And, and you can just about read Chris's lips as he walks the sideline and say, why didn't we get it? Overby is down on his knees at the nine-yard line. We look at head coach Joe Raymond Peace, but Overby on his knees at the nine, and they're going to tend to him. We'll take a timeout. We're in the second quarter. Eight minutes and 12 seconds to play. The pack still leads 17-14. We'll return to Ruston after this timeout. Did you know that there's a health plan? ...on the sideline commiserating about the defense, hoping they can hold. They thought they should have had a pick, an interception. Louisiana Tech has one. Willie Smith has his seventh of the year. That was on the opening drive, in case you weren't with us at the time. But Jason Martin, the quarterback for the Bulldogs, 14 of 21, two-thirds of his passes complete, 190 yards and a pair of TDs. He's got a first and 10 at the Pac-21. Armstrong with a cutback is nailed right at the 21. That's James Canada. And I was looking at Canada a little bit earlier when I mentioned Justin Tenpenny coming in the game, Dana. And Canada looked like he was winded, but not that time. And here comes David Miller back into the lineup for Tenpenny. And Canada's having a super game for that tackle position inside. He's made some big hits at the line of scrimmage. And that time, Tech only gets one out of it, so it's going to bring up second and nine. And Armstrong making his way to the sideline for some repairs. The guy you got to watch, the guy in the slot to the top of your screen, Chad Mackey. Martin goes the other way to the short side to Jackson out of bounds. So he'll take the short game. He's going to be very close to the first down, right near the 12-yard line. They may even have to measure for this one. He'll be very close to the first down for Louisiana Tech. 
one thing I have noticed is this game has settled in here in the second quarter. There's a lot less talking going on between the teams than we had earlier. He's just short of the first down. That'll bring up third and about one yard. See if Tech wants to go to the air. This time Mackey is in the slot right near the bottom of your screen. They've got a four-ride receiver set of their own, two on each side. They go to Mackey. Nice cut behind the line of scrimmage, dies for the first down. Boy, is he nimble-footed. He did a great job of juking Clint Peterson, the linebacker on that side. If Peterson doesn't get faked out of the play, he stops him short of the first down. But Mackey is, he has very quick feet. There's Peterson, number 39, for the right side of your screen, and he just overruns the play. And Guider is the one who had to make the stop. Mackey going to the surface when he was sure he got the first down, and they take a long look at it. Looks from up here that it's pretty clear. There it, you get a look at Mackey momentarily. From here it looks clearly to be a first down, but down there they have some questions about it. And they're going to bring the chains over to measure this one. If it is short, that'll bring up a fourth and very short. If it's a first down, it'll be first and ten at about the 11-yard line. Reminder once again, right after this football game this afternoon, the World Series, the opening game of the World Series, Cleveland and Atlanta go at it right here on News Channel 8. It is enough for the first down as you see the measurement. Atlanta's had a little bit of time to contemplate Cleveland, and Cleveland got that uh, few days off after beating Seattle. You get a split screen look again. Chris Alt, the head coach for the Wolfpack on the left, and Joe Raymond Peace. His team four and three, the Wolfpack four and two. I formation. The I back, Thomas coming right. And Johnson with a nick-tie tackle gets him out of bounds, and then it was Peterson. That was a late hit. Crowd reacting to it, and Peterson got Thomas in the back. We just we thought things had settled down again. They, they stir up. And Peterson, the linebacker on that side again, needs to turn that play inside, and he lets the guy get outside of him. He's 39, left side of your screen, Clint Peterson. Doesn't turn the, the play inside. He lets Thomas get outside of him, and there he makes the late hit after Thomas is out of bounds. And, Thomas took umbrage with it as well. Yeah, he thought everything had relaxed by then. Another good shot, you saw 42, Tawan Hall, being held by the jersey on that replay. He's being held by the jersey at the line of scrimmage. We couldn't break loose. Get a shot at Josh, Josh Miklos. We have not mentioned his name yet this afternoon. He's in the defensive unit. We mentioned John Payua earlier. He's back in there. First and goal now for Louisiana Tech at the three-yard line. Pack leads 17-14. Martin stumbles away from scrimmage. The corner of the end zone, boy. I, there's a pass. It was a touchdown that Cedric Williams will see a lot tonight because he didn't get the touchdown. He's had three balls dropped. Jason Martin has had three balls right in the hands of his receiver, two by Armstrong in this one by Cedric Williams. Perfect mm. pass. In fact, he had another one dropped by Mackey. That's four. He's had four balls dropped. Yeah, Martin's put up some pretty good numbers. We're not even to halftime yet. He and Mike Maxwell, a battle in the air, as everybody expected. Good shot from the end zone behind the Wolfpack defense. Armstrong trying to string it left, and he won't get in. He is just short, probably at about the half-yard line, and that'll bring him to the third and goal. It's one thing Nevada has shown this year, they may not be the quickest to the outside, but when you try to cut back on them, the pursuit from inside has been there all year long. Talk about pursuit. They did a good job here. They turn the play inside, make Armstrong cut up the field, and then they just fill the gap. James Johnson was the first one to get him. Well, Dana, they held on the same part of the field at San Diego and took it over at the one-yard line. Third and a yard to go. A little fade for Mackey, and he overthrew him. Now a decision to be made. Guider with some pretty good coverage. They're going to go for it. They know if they're going to win this game, they're going to have to win it in a shootout. It's going to be a high-scoring affair, and if you don't go for it here, it doesn't make any sense because you know the Wolfpack's going to put a lot of points on the board, and you're going to have to outscore them to beat them. So they're going to go for it. The homecoming crowd in their shirt sleeves and ties, they want the Bulldogs to push it in, and Nevada wants to make another big goal line stand. And the fans come to their feet at Joe IA Stadium. Motion to the right, 
They go to Armstrong. He's in. Number 24, Jason Armstrong, who dropped one. You talked about drop passes earlier, David. Dana, at the midfield, when he was wide open, redeems himself with that one-yard run. I think that's a big score, too, for Louisiana Tech. They're sending a message that they're, they can move the ball today against that Wolfpack defense, much like Northeast Louisiana did. They just send it across the right side. He picks a hole and then buries his way into the end zone. Marty Kent, right footer. Puts it up and good. And it's a 21-17. Once again, we have a lead change. 6.07 to play in the first half. Tech leads will return to rest of Louisiana. Look at it. Watch Armstrong in the backfield, number 24. He'll get the handoff and take it across the left side of your screen. The linebackers go inside Crawford and Peterson, and that left some room around the right side. That's how he scored the touchdown. The linebackers went inside, and he goes outside. Didn't follow his block, but he found some daylight. That's all he needed. David Miller got a hand on him, but he was in the end zone when he did. Short kick. Van Dyke comes forward, will take it at the 13. Behind the screen. He will get to the 39-yard line. So Nevada's still with an awful lot of time to work. Six minutes to go in the second quarter. Maxwell on the sideline getting a look at head coach Chris Hall, now telling the offensive unit what he wants him to do. Nevada had a 90-yard drive earlier in this game, and the Bulldogs take it 83 yards on the last possession in 15 plays, 4 minutes, 49 seconds, culminated by that Armstrong one-yard run. Yeah, you mentioned the 90-yard. The Pack had an 89-yarder. We have an 83. 38 points scored so far in this first half. On the ground, nice block for Wilson to get outside. And he will go out just about midfield. And I wanted to see who got that comeback block in the line. It was either Le LeGrap or uh, Cooper. I couldn't tell which. We'll get another look at it. But watch Wilson go around this block in the backfield. After a slow start, Ernie Wilson now 11 carries for 67 yards, almost six yards a carry, and that time he does a good job of getting it upfield and around the corner. For 10. The free safety starts, gets a bit. I couldn't tell that block. It, it, it was either Cooper or, or Hadwick because both of them were a, a 60 number. Wilson again. Washington the first to get him, but he gets him across midfield at the Tech 48-yard line. And Nevada may try to keep their defense off the field here for the remainder of the half. There's five minutes and 48 seconds remaining in the first half. Louisiana Tech leads by four, 21-17. And the Wolfpack would love nothing more than to drive the next 48 yards and use up the rest of the clock and go into the halftime locker room up by three. But if they get a quick one and they go out on top, they won't care. This time they throw a wide receiver screen to Van Dyke and he's tackled by the shoulder pad. It's Willie Smith, the guy that we mentioned in the pregame show, along with Van Dyke. What a great matchup it would be. It has been. It's lived up to that. So far, they've gone his way a lot today. Number 33, Willie Smith, the best cover guy, no question. He's a tough guy, too, by the way. His mom died during the middle of last season. He missed one game, but played the other 10. And then right after high school, this guy got shot in the stomach and came back and is playing football. He is a tough guy. They say he could play in the NFL. Only a two-yard gain by Van Dyke. Maxwell drops back again. Over the middle, throws for McHenry. A flag is down. McHenry spins his way to the 28. Big gainer of 20 yards that time for Nevada, but there is a hanky on the field, and we'll have to see. It looks like uh, they're, Mike Maxwell right there was saying it's against Louisiana Tech. It is. And Nevada will decline the penalty, of course, and take it at the 28-yard line. This is another perfectly thrown ball. Maxwell is on today. He led his receiver perfectly, McHenry, who just got in front of the linebacker that time and banged his way inside the 30. I still, I'm still looking and trying to see. And I can't see the push in the back. But Nevada, like you say, will decline regardless of whether we saw it or not. You get a good look at the smiling Steve McHenry. He has good reason to smile. He leads the team in scoring this year. 
He has nine touchdown catches. He averages nine points a game. Tops on the team. Yeah, he got three of those last week. And the one that's sticking in my mind is the block he gave to Van Dyke. Not only does he score, but he lets the other guy score, too. The battle with the first and 10. Maxwell with a play fake rolling out. So he gets a vision, throws, and that one dropped on the fingertips. You won't see Wilkins drop many of those. But that was on his fingertips at the waist. And the, I would guess he was on the wrong foot on the outside foot when he tried to reach down across his body and grab it. That's a monster day for Maxwell. That's a day's work for most quarterbacks. Most quarterbacks would love to have that as a day's work. And we're still in the first half. Wilkins just pushes back the corner, fakes the inside route, turns uh, Parker completely around, and the ball is right there. We've seen a lot of drop balls today, especially by receivers that normally don't drop a football. And he was on the front foot. He was a little flat-footed when he went down and just missed it. Second and ten, long count for the pack. On a draw, Wilson. A flag down, and it's got to be holding. One thing Maxwell and, and Wilson are doing, it, you know, Wilson gets some repetitions, but not that many. They played that very well because it, they set it up like it was going to be a pass. You see the indication, and Wilson waited and waited to pick the hole. So they'll move him back 10 yards. The play won't count. That'll nullify the six-yard gain, and we'll also push him back 10 yards. So it's a really, in essence, a 16-yard penalty. And they mark it from the the spot of the foul. So they move it back an extra yard. It's an 11-yard penalty. So they're all the way back at the 39-yard line. And that'll bring up second and 21. Normally, it's a long distance. But for these quarterbacks, now Mike Maxwell faced with it. It's not much at all. On a comeback grab by Cornell West, well, he gets about half of it back in front of James Crockett. Nevada has been penalized five times for 59 yards already in the first half. That's bad news if you're a Wolfpack fan. Yeah, they've been averaging close to 10 a ball game. Last week, they only had one penalty against Northeast Louisiana. It was in the first half, it was a 10-yarder. Well, we said Max gets just about half of it back. Now he's got a third and 10. Good protection. Another curl route in the seam. That's good enough for the first down at the 15-yard line. Cornell West got it back. Nevada in their first few series, work Van Dyke, work Van Dyke. He has eight catches for 118 yards here in the first half. Now, Mike Maxwell is picking out other receivers. Cornell West, Steve McHenry, Damon Wilkins. And that time, West gets the big 15-yard gain. It'll be first and 10 for the Wolfpack at the 14. You know, last week, Van Dyke had the 15 catches. But four receivers for the pack caught six or more. You got to look at the back of Cornell West. On the ground, Wilson right at the line of scrimmage. He won't get any more. Louisiana Tech sent a couple of linebackers that time in a blitz, and Myron Smith just happened to fill the gap that time that Wilson was trying to get through. Smith is number 21. He's coming on the blitz, and by the time he gets to the line of scrimmage, so does Wilson, and they meet head-on for no gain. In fact, he loses one. Mark it back at the 15-yard line. They were at the 14, second and 11. Van Dyke, the top of your picture. Maxwell looking the other way. Throws underneath. He was hit as he threw it. And it was big Derek Moore who got to Maxwell. Max just did get that off. Big 74, 6'3", 273. Maxwell hasn't been sacked yet this game. 11 sacks on the year. And that time Derek Moore made him rush the throw. And that's why it was incomplete. Derek Moore just got through the line of scrimmage. Now the tackles are big. Moore weighs 273. Diedrich Johnson, 285. It's the other guys that surround him, those two, that are undersized. The crowd stirred because Nevada with that third and long. Boy, the time Maxwell has. That one goes incomplete. Both McHenry and Wilkins were at the goal line. 
looked like a mistake because they had two receivers in the same spot. And I think Tisdale saying the same thing to Chris Hall. Watch the two receivers cross right in the middle of your screen. It's Wilkins and McHenry. Two receivers in the same spot. Shouldn't be that way. Yeah, but Myron Smith, the linebacker, dropping into coverage is the guy who knocks it away. Look at Smith. There's the play. Number 21, Myron Smith into coverage. So Shea will try his longest field goal of the year. If he converts it, it will be a 32-yard attempt from the right hash. He's got the distance, and he puts it through. Boy, Damon Shea, what a surprise. What a pleasant surprise for the Wolfpack. Makes it a one-point ball game. 21-20 in favor of Tech. Shea now 7-7 seven of seven on the year, and we'll have an interview with Shea coming up at halftime, including all the latest scores and highlights with Chris Gargano, the Maury Distributing Halftime Report, so stay tuned. And remember, immediately following this contest, we'll have Game 1 of the World Series between Atlanta and Cleveland. And what a series this should be. We've been without a World Series for two years now, of course, because of the strike last season. So I'm chomping at the bit to see some World Series action. You know, a lot of partisanship. I know you are kind of maybe favoring the Seattle team. Yes. And people, you know, want a Cinderella team in there. But in my humble opinion, I think the two best teams in baseball are going to go out one another this year. Oh, I think you're right. I think you're absolutely right. We have some other scores from around college football. Notre Dame in the third quarter is beating Southern Cal 21-10. to it's some freezing rain earlier there this morning. Southern Cal hasn't played in temperatures cooler than 67 degrees all season. Maybe that was a factor there. Ohio State beat Purdue 28 to nothing. Nebraska up on Kansas State 35 to 6 in Lincoln at halftime. That one surprises me. Jimmy House and his offensive unit, his offensive lineman, Jim is pleased with what they have done, and they have done a good job for him all year. A short kick taken at the 19-yard line. Return of 12 yards or maybe even 13. Important series now for the Nevada defense right before halftime. They only trail by one with 2.18 to go, but that's plenty of time for this quick strike. Louisiana Tech offense and their quarterback, Jason Martin, number 10. Wolfpack defense needs to come up big here right before halftime to go in only down one. We saw Max's numbers before, uh, Jason over 200 yards. Remember a quarterback a couple years ago at Weber State by the name of Jamie Martin? Yes. Throws a lot like Jason. Strong right arm. Three-step drop. Throws. Complete to Mackey. And Hassan pushes him out of bounds. Nevada on their drive. 11 plays, 46 yards. And we mentioned Damon Shea's 32-yard field goal. Hassan did a nice job that time of keeping Mackey in front of him and not giving him too big of a cushion. So as soon as he made the catch, he was there to make the hit and stop them short of the first down. As critical as people were of the Wolfpack defense last year, or last week, excuse me, the secondary, they have played well today. You're just going against a very potent offense like the Wolfpacks, and those uh, corners and safeties have been in on the play. Again, they go short pass. That's Jackson right side. Nevada closing quickly. They drive them out of bounds, but they say no. The clock will continue to run. Doyle Holman has been in for the Wolfpack in the secondary, and I'm not sure if that's because Overby is hurt or not. Cedric Williams, number 15, the wide receiver on this side, does a great job of getting a block on Mike Guider to, to spring Jackson for an extra few yards. In fact, you'll be able to see a 15 on the right side of your screen. See, he blocks Guider inside and lets Jackson get outside to get an extra five. And Holman, that JC transfer, is the guy who made the stick that time. Yeah, he's in there, number eight. Again, Mack, well, what a catch. He wasn't sure the ball was going to be thrown, looking with one eye at the defense and one eye at the quarterback. And you see him getting up, kind of shaking his head as he continues to do. And Martin just put it in there, and it looked like Mackey caught it with his right hand, one-handed. Tom Cruise leads an all-star takeover of his military academy in the movie Taps, coming up at 11.30 tonight. Don't miss Taps tonight on News Channel. Gain is sick, boy. Mackey jumped awfully quick. He was offside. They'll go deep to him. Oh, what a catch, a one-arm grab, but it'll bring it back. He was the guy that moved at the line of scrimmage. Flag on the play right at the 50-yard line, as Dan mentioned. Yeah, he did he's excited about it because he was downfield. The flag was thrown behind him. He didn't know that he was the guy offside. So they'll bring it back. But you just see the athleticism of Chad Mackey. This is another one-handed catch. One play after he makes a one-handed catch, he makes another one. And they say he's the best athlete on the team. They say that he goes to the pool and he'll do high dives and flips off. The center moved on that play. Yeah, Mackey too, but he's the guy that jumped. But look, you, 
there aren't enough superlatives on this catch. He's a good snow skier. Or, I mean, the guy does everything. They say he's the best athlete on the team. And Guider playing that left corner. Yeah, the ball went over him, but Guider did. Technically, he was very sound. Absolutely. He waited until he saw Mackey's eyes go up and look for the ball. Then Guider looked for the ball. What a great grab. Second and nine after the penalty. Martin steps up, and there was a play by Tawan Hall that gave Miller the sack, but Tawan, again, big pressure from the left defensive end. Hall, number 42, did a great job this time, you're right, of applying the pressure. He comes from the left side of your screen. There he is. He comes right around the tackle on that side, made Martin step up, and at that point, David Miller had a chance to get the sack. Second sack of the season for David Miller. He's the only guy on the team, by the way, who has multiple sacks for Nevada this season. Hall working well with Miller. You get a good look at him. Boy, since that North uh, Texas ball game, when he got blindsided, he has been a different player. Only 20 seconds remaining in the first half, and Louisiana Tech is going to let this thing run down. They've made six of nine third and down conversions, as you see, so they're red hot there. But they've got a great distance to go in 18 seconds. They've got a one-point lead. Jason Martin, the quarterback, completing 53% of his passes coming in. Delay of game penalty against Louisiana Tech. They'll move him back another five yards. And Louisiana Tech would be content to let the clock wind down and go into halftime here at homecoming, up 21-10 over Nevada. And the Pack will get the ball to start the third quarter. Tech got the coin toss, but it decided to go on offense, and it paid off for them because they scored the first time they had the ball. Tech four penalties, 25 yards in the first half. We give a lot of room to Mackey in a situation like this, and they go on the ground. Big surprise. Boy, they try to catch everybody as Terrence Wilson gets a call. Louisiana Tech happy just to go into the halftime locker room up by one, and they will. But our first 30 minutes are over. 41 points scored. What do you think we're going to have in the second half? I think we're going to have a lot more scoring. Chris Ald is making his way over to Paul Stewart. Paul Stewart is going to have an interview with head coach Chris Ald. I'll be interested to hear his impressions. Paul, down to you on the sideline. Coach, the defense came up big on that last drive, but it's been the same old scenario. Offense in, in sync and the defense having a hard time holding them. Well, I'll tell you what, the offense is moving the ball well on them, and defensively, you're right, Paul, we're struggling, we're not, we're giving them the big plays, you know, and that has to be eliminated. Part of it is there's absolutely no pressure uh, by our front four. We see Doyle Holman in there in the secondary, as well as Guider. How are those guys doing? I think they're doing okay, Paul. We're watching pretty closely. I think Mike uh, got burned this last time, but he's there, you know, he's ready to make a play, and uh, from what I can see of Doyle, he's playing that free safety spot pretty well. On the Wolfpack's last touchdown, I heard you yell from the line of scrimmage, Van Dyke's going to be open, and he was. Well, yeah, we, we can see the coverage. Mike's reading very, very well. He can see what they're doing when they're blitzing, and he can he can have a pretty good feel for what they're trying to do. Okay, Coach, we'll uh, talk to you as you come out of the second half. Back upstairs to you. Good job, Paul Stewart. Still struggling with those vocal cords, but there you get a look at it. 21-20. They said there would be a lot of passing, a lot of offense, and there certainly has, Dana, here in the first half. All right, let's send it back to Reno. Chris Gargano for all the scores and highlights on the Maury Distributing Halftime Report. We're back in Louisiana at halftime, and you see a one-point ball game. Louisiana Tech leading University of Nevada 21-20. And, Dana, when you look at the first half numbers, they're equally as close. Nevada's thrown the ball 27 times. They have 19 completions. Tech, 28 times, 19 completions. Both quarterbacks over 200 yards. We expected an aerial battle, and so far... We've got just what we bargained for. 278 yards passing for Mike Maxwell, 220 for Jason Martin. The Wolfpack has outgained Louisiana Tech by 80 total yards. And you look at the, the receiver, uh, Mackey, he has 11 catches. He had 15 last week, 11 in the first half. Third down conversions, the Wolfpack has converted four of seven. Louisiana Tech, seven of 11. That one turnover did hurt the Wolfpack. They threw an interception down inside the five-yard line at the other end, which prevented them from scoring any points. And in terms of passing today, Mike Maxwell, 278 yards, as we mentioned, is a one-point halftime lead. Receiving battle going on between two of the best receivers in the country. Alex Van Dyke, nine catches for 120 yards in the first half. And Chad Mackey, 11 catches for 143 yards. We expect more of the same from Joe I. Lay Stadium coming up in the second half. Right now we have the executive director of the Wolf Club, Jeff Ardito, is with us here at halftime. Jeff, thanks for joining us here at halftime. Thanks for having me, Dana. 
you know, there's been some talk about expanding Mackey Stadium. Where are we, where are we at in terms of that? The growth of Mackey Stadium really was announced last May when we had our spring luncheon out at the Nugget there. Uh, we announced the brand new scoreboard, uh, which was put up this uh, this fall, and also this, the executive skybox project, which we hope to begin construction here at the end of football season. Uh, we were hoping to make a major announcement next weekend with the you know the Rebels coming to town and the Nevada Day weekend and everything. Uh, we're still out knocking down the doors trying to raise a few more dollars for that project. So is that the key right now, getting the dollars to try to expand Mackey Stadium? Yes, we, we've had several commitments so far on the, on the project. Uh, we still have a little ways to go. And what's really great about that project, Dana, it's, it's going to generate $250,000 a year for scholarships. And, you know, and not what everybody thinks, just for the football guys. It's for all the sports, uh, the, the women's programs as well as the men. You guys have a big game coming up next weekend, probably the biggest of the season against UNLV as they come into town. Still tickets available for that one? Absolutely. We sold about 26,000 so far. We we do expect to have our record-setting day uh, in, in excess of 28,000 with the Rebels coming up to town. It should be a barn burner. Capacity at Mackey is what, 30,500? Actually, 31.5 right now, and uh, we, we expect to hit the whole thing. It's going to be a it's going to be a big one, and I know uh, you know the Rebels were off this week, so I'm sure they've had the extra days to prepare for us. Nevada Day weekend, any other activities on campus? I tell you, we've got a lot of activities. Just uh, with some of our fundraising projects that are going on, we've got our Dream House raffle still going on, uh, and basketball season. It's sneaking up on us, and we're planning for the Big West Tournament. So we're really excited about some of the things that are happening uh, here in the next few months. Yep. Pat Foster has the team out running last Sunday. They started practice for basketball season. Very excited about that because the Big West Tournament will be held at Lawler Event Center next March. Oh, it, it really is. It's got a chance, you know, whenever you can play those basketball games on your home floor and, and with a chance of going to the NCAA tournament, that's what it's all about. Although, you know, they only take 64 teams to the NCAA tournament. And anytime you can play on your home floor at Lawler Event Center, uh, we're really excited about the prospects for basketball. So. Jeff, thanks for joining us here at halftime. Big football game coming up next weekend as the Wolfpack hosts UNLV. Tickets still available. It's 21-20 Louisiana Tech here at halftime. We'll be back Back with some first half highlights coming up after this break. Well, we're back in uh, Reston, Louisiana. Dan Gustin along with Dana Wagner. You get a look at a concerned tree, uh, trio in the press box. Mike Gilhammer on the left is the defensive coordinator, and they're concerned about their defense. Chris All was a little bit critical of the defense going off, but I thought they have played fairly well. It's just been a wide open offensive game. Very wide open. Here are some of the first half highlights. Jason Martin on the opening drive of the football game hits his favorite receiver, Chad Mackey, for a touchdown. That made it 7-0 Louisiana Tech. And then Mike Maxwell leads the Wolfpack on a long drive, hitting Devon Wilkins, and the Wolfpack took a 10-7 lead in this contest. But Louisiana Tech back and forth, and they go a 14-10 on this middle screen. The Wolfpack was caught on an all-out blitz, and Chad Mackey raced all the way into the end zone. It was 14-10 Louisiana Tech in the first half. Wolfpack didn't wait long, though, before they scored. Wolfpack had some long drives in the first half. And here, Alex Van Dyke gets a great block from Steve McHenry as he sprung into the end zone. And the Wolfpack took a 17-14 lead. Back and forth we go. The Bulldogs scoring a one-yard run by Jason Armstrong. And they go into the halftime locker room up 21-20. A reminder, once again, our halftime highlights are brought to you by Sedgwick Insurance Brokers, proud sponsors of the Wolfpack. Both teams back on the field now for the second half. We're under a minute left in halftime, and the Wolfpack will receive the opening kickoff here in the second half, down by a point, and it looks like it may be incumbent upon the offense to get something going. They've already scored 20 points, but they may have to outscore Louisiana Tech to win this football game. It looks like an offense is showing by both teams, and Wolfpack offense has been clicking, but they're going to have to continue that if they want to win the, the game. Well, through seven games this year, Dana, in the third quarter, Louisiana Tech has averaged three points. That has not been their quarter of football. Matter of fact, the second half has not been their half. They have averaged seven points in the fourth quarter. Conversely, Nevada's averaged 12 and a half points in the third quarter and eight and a half in the fourth. The fourth quarter has been their worst quarter. So let's see if the Wolfpack can get it going early here in the third quarter. Our man on the sideline is Paul Stewart. And Paul? Coach, oh, oh, it's stressed during halftime that this team needs to play to win and not just not to lose. They also, he also stressed that everybody on all the special teams has to pay extra attention because something good is going to happen on the kicking game. 
That's uh, Paul Stewart on the sideline, and uh, we'll forewarn his lovely wife, Annie, to get that, that hot tea going, because when Paul comes home, he's going to eat some honey and tea and take care of that laryngitis. He is struggling down there, but we appreciate everything that he's trying to do for us today, keeping us intact with what's going on on the sideline. Well, Nevada will, again, return the kick here in the third quarter. It's going Van Dyke's way as he goes laterally two yards deep. This time he will not bring it out. So the Wolfpack first and 10 from their own 20-yard line down by a point as we open the third quarter. Mike Maxwell and company coming out of the field. And a final word from Chris Salt before he heads out. They tell him to play and they'll come on to the field and they'll have to march 80 yards if they want to score a touchdown on this drive. Reminder once again to stay tuned. We'll get the football game in for you. But coming up right after the game, the World Series starts game one. The Atlanta Braves and the Cleveland Indians right here on News Channel 8. Nevada going with four receivers. They're quad set. Wilson. What a great block by Van Dyke to get Wilson about 10 more yards. Steve McHenry also out in front of that play. Wide receivers doing a nice job of downfield blocking. Not only to the front five, the union up front give him some running room. And he's found most of his running room this afternoon around the end. Not much between the tackles, and the Wolfpack thought coming into this game, they'd be able to run between the tackles because Louisiana Tech is undersized inside. We're going to get another look at it. Maybe we'll see number 86, Alex Van Dyke, who just made contact for so long, he might have been flagged for holding because there is a flag down. We're going to look at it, and we'll see if we pick up Van Dyke. He'll be to the right of your screen. And there was a holding call on the play, so they'll bring this one back, but Ernie Wilson showing that he is a good running back. The running back that the Wolfpack knew that he was. We haven't seen a lot of him this year. Parker pushed him out, but it was a little quick. It's awfully hard for us to tell on the replay if the hold was against the 86 Van Dyke. So they mark it from the spot of the hold. It's still first down, but now, Dana, it's first and eight. That's a rarity. Wilson again. Boy, ran inside the block. It was it looked like the end was being kicked out or the linebacker was being kicked out and Wilson with a full gallop inside gets that first down. And I think you'll see the size of the Wolfpack offensive line start to pay dividends now as the game wears on. They'll start to wear down the smaller Louisiana Tech defensive line and linebackers and the Wolfpack running game should kick into high gear now here in the second half as the bigger linemen take advantage of the smaller line. Wolfpack ran for 71 yards in the first half. Van Dyke, again, a middle screen, a wide receiver middle screen. He'll go around everybody. And at the end of that play, Cornell West was coming back to lay a block, but saw that the defensive man had his back turned, and number one, West ran right by him. He didn't, he didn't lay a block. We might get another look at it. Van Dyke did a great job of picking his way along that line of scrimmage this time. He was just trying to find an opening where he could take it upfield, but before he could do that, he had to juke Diedrich Johnson, number 92, get by him, and then he was able to go upfield. Could barely see a white jersey. Well, maybe we'll see it at the end of where... There's Corn West. He was going to block 37 Crockett. And he's kind of edged his way in front of him. He didn't lay He didn't lay a block on him, but he shielded him. He screened him. He screened Crockett from making the tackle, and that got Van Dyke an extra five. Van Dyke now with ten catches, had nine at half. So Van Dyke, 10 catches, we mentioned, 130 yards, a pair of touchdowns. That's the sixth time in seven games this year he's gone over 100 yards receiving. Maxwell, good play action. Going up top for Wilkins. Wilkins adjusting to the ball that dropped it. Boy, Wilkins, Crockett didn't know where the ball was, Dana. Wilkins came back, adjusted to it, and then couldn't hang on. The ball was underthrown. That's why Crockett didn't know where it was. If it had been laid out there, Crockett had the perfect coverage. But when it was underthrown, Wilkins came back for the ball, but Crockett didn't. Let's see if DeBond just dropped this one or if Crockett got a hand in there. It looked like Crockett popped the ball from underneath, which popped the ball loose. Yeah, DeMond didn't predict it. He, he cut inside, but then what he needed to do was put his body between himself and number 37. Crockett didn't do it. So second and 10, pack at their own 42-yard line. They trail 21-20. Wilson sliding along the line of scrimmage has the first down, but, boy, that's tough sledding. When you go laterally, the defense closes quickly, and it's a north-south that gets the big yards. 
Do you mention North South down here in the South? Yeah, it's, it's a whole different deal down here. You know, football's a religion down here in Louisiana, down in the South. We came, I, I rode to the football stadium today with the defensive on their bus, and we had uh, two state troopers with full lights and sirens leading our buses into the stadium today. Wilson narrowing in on 100 yards. McHenry, what a grab behind him. Maxwell wasn't sure he was going to throw the ball. He was uncertain. Max put it behind McHenry. McHenry talking about adjusting. Super. The ball was thrown just a little bit high, and McHenry got his hands up and then had to kind of drop him down to make the catch. It was thrown just a little bit behind him, and he threw the body into his it threw the ball into his body to make the grab. You could see just before Maxwell delivered it, he was actually thinking of, of looking off McHenry and for somebody else and last second decided to pull the trigger. Another big gain for McHenry and a first down for the pack at Tex 42. Wilson, big hole right side, nice cutback, and he's inside the 30 to the 26-yard line. Unlike the, the beginning of the game, the Wolfpack didn't have much luck running the football, but now they seem to be running it well. They're running very well, and Ernie Wilson will jog off the sideline. Dennison Dawson, the sophomore, will jog onto the field. Dawson had one carry in the first half for minus three yards. Let's see if he can get it going. We'll see. It looks like Wilson, when you get limping off there, may have a little bit of a ding. They want him to go, but they're not afraid to go to Dawson. You saw Ken Miner, number three, in the foreground of your screen there. He has not played all afternoon. He has a sprained right ankle. Maxwell. Boy, waiting in the, in the little scene was Cornell West. He went down and found a soft area between three defenders in that zone and just waited for the ball. Good enough for another first down, a pickup of 11 yards. It'll be first and 10 at the 15-yard line. And you're right, he just found the soft spot underneath Willie Smith. They worked. That side, the Big West Player of the Week, three times a season, number 33, Willie Smith, has been worked on in this game. Maxwell's picking him apart. Shadow's now covering some of the field. Max at times shading his eyes, looking back, across into the sideline to get the play. It's an uneven pattern out there right now. The lights are on. Wilson back in, nice cutback. Boy, there's a punishing run by Ernie Wilson. Hit by Parker at the five-yard line, and both of them end up at the two. Wilson, Wilson 18 carries, 123 yards on the afternoon. 123 yards for that guy. More than five yards a carry. And you watch the end of this run, and this is what Chris Hall likes to call Wolfpack football, a running back who finishes a run. Yeah, Parker hung on, but he, Wilson just got his shoulder, got a little lower. See him dip that yep. in at the last second? First and goal from the two-yard line. Again, they go to war with a heavy formation. And Wilson diving at the goal line. They say, no, he didn't get in. Interesting. Just short down there. Because Chad Mackey at the other end of the field dove in and put the ball across the goal line. Remember Crawford saying his knee was down? Take another look, Dana. He faked the handoff up the middle, then went to Wilson, did a great job to get on the outside. He broke the tackle of Shane Kerrigan, the middle linebacker. And I couldn't tell from that angle if he made it in or not. Well, yeah, look at he's got the ball, his knee. I think it's a good call. It looked like he was just short when his knee touched the ground. I wouldn't be surprised to see a quarterback sneak here. A yard to go, goal to go, a yard away. Dawson going up the middle, and he is in. Dennison Dawson puts the one back back out on top. Dawson's second touchdown of the year puts the Wolfpack up by five pending the extra point. And the Wolfpack drives 80 yards in less than four minutes. And I think that was a huge statement here in the second half. Dennison Dawson had his game so far of his career, the game we did last year down in Fresno, when he carried nine times, it was a mop-up roll, really showed he could take some punishment. That's a good, strong run. We have a timeout before the extra point. Nevada takes a timeout as you get a shot of the back of Dawson. We have 11.04 to play in the third quarter. The pack leads 26-21. We'll be right back. Nevada took a timeout. They wanted to talk about a two-point play. They're going to go for it. Rockwood on the left side moved a little bit, but no flag down. 
Maxwell looks up, throws. Oh, what a catch by Wilkins. He didn't know the ball was coming. Turned around and look at He's thanking right now whoever he thanks on plays like that because the ball was in his hands before he knew it. Maxwell threw it well before Wilkins ever turned around. He turned around and the ball was already on top of him. Wilkins, who's dropped one ball, gets some congratulations by Chris Hall for making a super catch. We will return 28-21. The Wolfpack leads. We'll be right back. Well, as you see, Nevada goes for two, and they make it happen. Dana and I were talking about that. I thought it was too early. Dana, you did not. You were right. When you're down, when you're up by five, you got to go for two. The chart says go for two, and Wilkins makes a superb catch that time. Remember earlier in the year, Wilkins was wearing gloves? Not wearing gloves, and boy, he could just feel that ball trickle into his hands. There, the two guys talking, Chris Alt and Mike Maxwell. The short kick is... Corralled by Thomas, and he falls to the 30-yard line. And I wonder, with Damon Shea kicking that ball short, did he hurt himself? Now he didn't look like as he trots off the field. During the break, we saw running back Ernie Wilson getting his right ankle taped by Tony Merrick. He may have a twisted right ankle, but it looks like he will continue to play in this football game. The Wolfpack again, they down the kick to the end zone by Van Dyke and then proceeded to go 80 yards in 11 plays with Dennis and Dawson capping it off. 28-21 pack, 11-01 to go here in the third quarter. Martin setting up that middle screen drop. Armstrong has dropped a couple big ones, and that one, again, it may have been thrown through hands and in traffic, but he never seemed to really see it clearly. That's the third pass that he's dropped, the fifth pass that's been dropped by a Tech receiver. Let's see how the defense plays now in the third quarter. You mentioned earlier that Louisiana Tech has only scored 19 points all year in the third quarter. This has been their worst quarter by far. And seven games, less than three points on average. Martin throwing underneath, boy, he's way off the mark, intended for Mackey, number four. I didn't think his arm was hit, I just think he threw the, the poorest ball he's thrown all afternoon. Third and ten now for Louisiana Tech at their own 30-yard line. This would be a huge stop for the Wolfpack defense, and they could get the ball right back for the Wolfpack offense. Tech has thrown to the wide side of the field, that little wide receiver comeback. There you get a look. That's Cornell West being taped. Another Wolfpack player being taped, but they've come off the line of scrimmage and thrown what's kind of called a, a safe flare pass. Let's see if they do it again on this third and long. Drag the middle with Mackey. Arm fake, and that one's going to be thrown far short, out of bounds. They were trying to set up Mackey, and the Wolfpack had it sniffed out pretty well. And heavy pressure by Tawan Hall. And look at Martin is down on his knees at the 15. He's still down. He, he took a pretty good lick, and the referee's going to call a timeout on the field so they could come out and tend to Jason Martin. You know what they tried to do in that play? You're exactly right. They sent Chad Mackey on the middle screen. They were hoping the DB would come with him, and then Jason Armstrong snuck along the right sideline long. Martin didn't have time to get it to Armstrong. There was the play fake. He's trying to get it to Armstrong long, but he couldn't. Tawan Hall was right in his face. Just what they tell you to do, put your hat right in the shoulder pads, right in the chest area, and that's what 42 Tawan Hall did. And Martin uh, is shaking a little bit. And if he's knocked out of the game, Louisiana Tech is knocked out of this game. Chad Burks, his backup, has completed half of his passes, but he hasn't thrown very many. There's Tony Merrick working on the shoulder of David Miller. Tony, the head trainer. Now in the Council of District 8 trainers, being recognized for his tremendous work. Martin with his hat off going to the sideline. I think it's going to take more than one hit like that to keep him down, as long as they didn't break something on him. So Tech will punt. Nevada with a 10-man front. Payne gets it off. Boy, he gets some distance on it. And Gibbons calls a fair catch and will take it at the Wolfpack 21-yard line. We will take another timeout. We're in the third quarter. 10.38 still to play. The Pack leads. They'll have the ball when we come back. They're on top 28-21. We are in Ruston, Louisiana, here at the home of the Bulldogs, and the pack leading 28-21. Now let's take a look at today's Taco Bell borderline call. Here's the handoff on the Wolfpack's last possession. Ernie Wilson, did he get in or didn't he? 
The referee says no. And that's our Taco Bell borderline call. The Wolfpack scored on the next play, so it didn't make any difference. So Nevada now with the 79 yards to go for another score. On the ground, that is Wilson back in. He takes a jarring hit, but he gets four yards to the 25-yard line. You know, Dana, you were talking earlier about Keynes kicking, the punter for Tech. Well, he's only been averaging 36, but today he has a 50, a 45, and a 49-yarder. They're 95th in the country in net punting, which puts them in the bottom 10 in the nation in Division I. But today he's come up big, and it's put the Wolfpack in a little bit of a hole here at their own 25-yard line. Two wide receivers, top of your screen. Van Dyke is alone at the bottom. Max looking for him. On and out, Van Dyke gets a foot down. He makes the catch. They say that his left foot came down before his right foot. We'll get another look at that one, Dan. We've already had the borderline call. <laughs> we might need two. Which foot came down first? Was it the one that was inbounds or the one that was out of bounds? In college, you only need one foot inbounds and right foot's down first that's right clearly he was clearly the right foot is down first no question oh yeah that's a catch that was a catch that was a borderline call third and six and that's where it hurts you because now you've got to punt it back that's the first time this afternoon nevada has been three and out it wasn't a borderline call it was a bad call yes it was Jason McLean will punt for the first time. Nevada's only punted five times in the last two ball games. McLean only averaging 36 and a half yards a punt this season, but he has good hang time, so his net is right about there. And you know, you can't blame him. He doesn't get any work. Dean Jackson is in single safety back inside his 35. The left-footed McLean, you get a shot over his shoulder. Jeff Hadwick does the long snapping for the pack. Good snap. McLean got some air under it. Back at the 28-yard line, Jackson gets some yardage as Mike Crawford was the first one down there, made him change direction. I think Jackson thought he took a knee in the ribs and he was looking for the guy that gave it to him. There's Crawford, the middle linebacker out of incline. So Nevada gives it up on three downs, puts their defense back out, but the pack leads 28-21. Jason Martin is back in at quarterback. A draw. And that's Ragsdale, Lee Ragsdale, first time we have seen him this afternoon. Rags came in with an even 500 yards. He has been averaging, Dana, 8.2 yards a carry. He got eight on that one. Well, the draw play works there. Jason Martin, they try to go back, look like they're going to pass, and it just opens up the middle wide open. Mike Crawford, the middle linebacker on the play, got blocked, so he couldn't make the stop. Miles with a pretty good lick. Dropped it from the side. There you get a shot at Deshaun. He's at the line of scrimmage. Drops off, doesn't come. The reverse to Mackey. Guider grabs him and hangs on and runs out of bounds with him. Lamont Porter, the linebacker on that side, was going to make the tackle, but Grant Williams, the big tackle, weighs 305 pounds, blocked Porter out of the way, which forced Guider to make the tackle and sprung Mackey for some extra yardage. Good look at the key men in their offense. Last week we saw Stepford Williams in Mackey Stadium. We see Chad Mackey on the road. Tawan Hall gets locked back in. Justin Tenpenny working on Tawan's helmet. First down. Good play action. They go back on the right side. Nice play by Guider. Guider diving for the ball intended for Figaro. And that's what speed will do for you. Mm -hmm. Guider is a burner. They say he's almost as fast as Alex Van Dyke, and he looks a little shooken up. Yeah, I think... Uh, some, you know, Wade told might be a hip pointer. He wants out, but nobody's been sent on the field to relieve him. Look at that play. That's what they have expected from Guider all this year. Well, whatever was bothering him, it subsided because he's picking up Williams. Martin sprinting out left. Got all 
point. What a play at the last second. Holman coming over, but Mackey had that one in the cash register. Holman saves the touchdown that time. Here's another guy who was all conference last year in Southern California in junior college football. Crawford came on the blitz. You saw him enter the screen, and Holman gets there at the last second. You know, that one was just a little bit underthrown. If yep. he had let him a little bit, that was six. Yep. Doyle Holman replacing Garnett Overby. He has been a good special teams performer, getting his chance along with Guider. And sure, there have been a lot of points put up, but I think those guys have played well. From El Camino Real High School in Woodland Hills, Doyle Holman. Third and ten. The middle screen to Jackson. While he gets loose and gets knocked forward close to the first down, the spot will tell if he gets it. I think he's about a half a yard short, but they're in four down territory, and Jackson is still flat on his back at the 34-yard line after Yearwood just laid the lumber on him. Yeah, Yearwood hit him pretty good, had a bad angle, got him from behind and pushed him forward, and it is close. They may take a measurement. They're going to go for it here on fourth down and one. This would be a 50-yard field goal. That's out of the range of Marty Kent. And Louisiana Tech knows they're going to have to put a lot of points on the board to win this one. And they're short, and I'm sure they'll go for it by about a half a yard. Well, they've converted 39% of their third downs this year. Now this is a fourth. The Wolfpack defense is going to have to be very careful against play action as Joe Raymond Peace, the head coach of Louisiana Tech, gets the crowd going. The head coach had looked like the head cheerleader. <laughs> yes. Watch out for the play action pass. They may fake the hand up and throw the pass for the big six. This play works because the defense comes up to stuff the run. Fourth and a yard, we're in the third quarter with 8.33, so there's a lot of game to be played. But these are starting to mount up and starting to be crucial. They throw for Jackson. They've worked that so well. Mm -hmm. Payua finally makes a stop, but that one, the other receiver blocks for you, so I don't know how you stop him. Cedric Williams, the slot guy in that play, comes inside, makes a block, and springs Jackson around the left side on a big fourth down conversion, which keeps the drive alive for Tech. They're down by seven, 28-21, 8-20 remaining here in the third quarter. Martin just looked over there. He was open, and Cedric Williams gets the block on Darnell Hassan. Jackson had plenty of yardage. And Miles again, who leads the Wolfpack in tackles coming in. Averaging 13 a ball game and starting to accumulate a lot more. Ragsdale got a block, turns the right corner, but James Johnson closes on him and drops him after he gets two yards. We haven't seen much of Ragsdale tonight. He has that strained hamstring, which has kept him out of the lineup, and he runs one play and then jogs off the sideline. That hamstring has been very bothersome. Remember, Emmett Smith had one last year for Dallas, and that kept him out of the lineup during the playoffs. We saw David Miller's being, shoulder being worked on. He comes off dragging that left arm, and right away the trainers are going to get to David Miller. You, you can't play defensive tackle with one good arm. Well, you know, there have been a couple guys. Billy Bonsall for the University of Nevada did it for a couple years, and I don't know how. The stop and go, and wide open is Williams. Touchdown! the fourth down conversion. It's the same play. They try to drag Mackey inside. He fakes the throw to Mackey. The corner bites on it. And Williams, who's supposed to be blocking on the play, releases. And he was wide open. Good, good analysis in that very sound offensive scheme. And look at Joe Pease. Is he happy? He set it up earlier, as you said, and then capitalized for six. And Wolfpack loves to do that themselves. They'll set you up with one play, and then they'll run it a different way for the big gainer. Kent's extra point is good. The offside against the Wolfpack won't matter. They'll take the extra point. We are dead even with 7:21 still to play here in the third quarter. And Joe Raymond Peace is pretty happy about what's going on. Well, earlier we were concerned about David Miller, and that's David Miller without the shirt, out the pads, sitting on the bench there looking at his left shoulder. 
in uh, the team position, trying to determine right now whether Miller can go. You know he wants to go. We're hearing now for the sideline that it's a sprained left shoulder. Mike Guider, number nine, who's sitting right next to him on his right, is getting his knee worked on, it looks like. So the walking wounded on the defense right now. A bad call cost the Wolfpack in that situation. Van Dyke had enough for the first down. The referee said that he was out of bounds. It stopped the drive. The Wolfpack had to punt, and Tech scored on the ensuing drive, 64 yards in eight plays. And again, that play that they scored on was no fluke. They had set that up previously and then came back to it. And that's that's what maybe a lot of people don't understand. The coaches run certain things. They wonder, why are they doing that? They're setting something else up. It reminds me of something Nevada did earlier in the season with Steve McHenry. They used him as the decoy, the blocking wide receiver for that middle screen. Well, the Wolfpack saw that that play was open. They faked the pass to the inside guy, and McHenry releases long. He fakes the block, releases long, and they throw the ball down the sideline. He caught a touchdown pass on that one. Well, that's a good point. You, you don't see everything in the first quarter. Things build. Marty Kent will kick off. Van Dyke, very deep in the end zone, will not bring this one out. No way. For the second time in this quarter, the pack will start at their 20-yard line. Last time they went 80 when they started at the 20. They've added two possessions here in the third quarter. First one of the third quarter ended in a touchdown. The next one, three and out. Maxwell, 22 of 33 yards for three, or 22 attempts, of, uh, 22 completions in 33 attempts for 312 yards. He now passes uh, Jeff Tisdale on the all-time career passing yardage list. He is now in fourth place ahead of Tiz, the assistant head coach. Wilson turning the corner, just missed the uh, tackle. Smith ran right by him, and Wilson got about four more. Well, football action, as you can agree, 56 points. It's been a wide open ball game, but that's not all the sports action today. Coming up after the game, the World Series. Game one of the World Series. The Braves and the Indians immediately following this football game. Boy, people have been waiting two years for the World Series. Action pack, can't wait to get into this one. The four wide receivers for the pack, two right, two left. And Wilson again. Boy, they were dragging at that ball and he just hung on Myron Smith from the back and then Starks came up to help him up out of the front. No fumbles today for the Wolfpack and just the one interception, the only turnover on the day. Chris Alf on the sideline, you mentioned Jeff Tisdall, the offensive coordinator, they consult and talk about the, the play and then you saw Chris just calling it by. By fire. <laughs> Max again with a play action. That's a fire. It's a, really a, a down and stop Van Dyke. as Van Dyke trying to run off the corner, then making the quick stop and come back. Van Dyke just pushes number 33, Willie Smith, back in the stance, and you have to respect Van Dyke's speed. And when Smith turns his back, you got him. He's dead to rights, and you make a big gainer like that. Smith is just trying to keep him in front of him. Yep, because if you don't, the scoreboard lights up again. Four receivers for the pack, the ball at midfield. Wilson goes left. Parker chases him out of bounds, but he ran through a tackle that you don't run through very often. Myron Smith and Wilson, you know, like last year. Remember last year, Krishan, they brought in Kenny Miner. And Miner, when Krishan was hurt, he can respond with a 100-yard day. That's what Wilson's done today, 100 and more. Wilson over 150 yards now rushing in the afternoon and we're still midway through the third quarter. He could rush for over 200 yards this afternoon. He came in with 173. Look at that. He's close to what he had all season long. <laughs> Second and two after the eight yard run by Wilson. They'll work him again. Fumble. Yep. Was he down or no? They got it. E. Hit him from the side. Hit him right on the ball. I think we'll... I don't know if we'll get a look at it or not, but they, they got him from the side on the ball and loose it came. I suppose that was my fault because two minutes earlier I said there were no fumbles in this contest. I probably jinxed the Wolfpack on this one. There's Wilson. See, 58 Lance Reed. 
Nope. It's a, a, a Dewan Washington. Dewan Washington forces the fumble. And, and I'll stand corrected. He didn't get him on the ball. He came across. And that is Louisiana Tech's 11th fumble recovery this season. They are a plus three now in turnover department. They've, they've received three more turnovers than they've given to the other team. Conversely, Nevada now has a turnover margin of a minus 14. Come on, get the back. That's colossal. Mark throwing up the seam. He's got his tight end for the first time. That's the six foot seven tight end, Josh Bradley. Louisiana Tech loves to use this guy as a decoy. He came in second and catches only to Chad Mackey on this squad. One week they'll go to Bradley extensively. The next week they won't. That way the defenses can't key on him. You see film on him, you say, hey, this guy's going to catch a lot of passes. You key on him, he doesn't catch any. First half, none. Now he catches a big one here in the third quarter. They may go to him more often. Well, you can't miss him. The size he's got, 255. Martin again wants to go for the bundle for Williams. Cedric caught one, but Mike Guider would not turn him loose. Cedric is a big play receiver for these guys. He's only caught five balls this season, but three of them have been for touchdowns this season. Talk about rivalries, and Nevada has one coming up next week with UNLV back at home. But the Southern Cal Notre Dame rivalry has just been monumental over the years. Southern Cal, number five in the nation, loses to the Irish today, 38 to 10. That's in South Bend. Golden Domer is going nuts today. Attendance here at homecoming in Ruston, 18,825. Second and 10 Bulldogs. Pressure up the middle, release pass to Armstrong. He's tackled immediately by Johnson. Nice play by James Johnson. No linebackers to be found because the Wolfpack sent six, two linebackers on the blitz. And Johnson had to make that saving tackle to bring up third and seven now. We are tied at 28. 5 11 to play in the third quarter. Nevada was on a drive again from their 20 yard line. They fumbled it away. Seven of 13 third down conversions for Tech. There's a strong safety, James Johnson. Or the free safety, excuse me. Holman has played, and uh, I would assume Overby is not going to play anymore at strong. And we, I think that was a delay of game. Yeah, the clock ran out before Martin could get it off. A very costly penalty. How do you let that happen? Key game, tied at 28, 445 remaining in the third quarter, and you don't keep an eye on the clock. There they are. Snake eyes, double zero. <laughs> that doesn't make Joe Raymond Peace happy at all. I, re I realize coming back game, he stayed double zero isn't snake eyes, but it is in that situation. In his eighth season here at Louisiana Tech, he yep. took this team to the Independence Bowl back in 1990. That was his best season here. Joe Ray uh, appealed to their emotions last week. He said, you guys don't win next week. We've lost two in a row. You don't win next week. I may not be here. I may not be here for my ninth. He said after that he was just kidding, trying to rile up the squad, but... Martin on third and 12, dumps it off. That's Thomas. He got the first down fumble. Wait a minute. Was he down? They say he was. Oh! Hassan picked it up. Not a good break for the Wolfpack. Joe Raymond B says he was down. That's the first down. What are you talking about? We'll get a good look at it here. Was this a fumble or was it not? Billy Thomas on a great screenplay. They set it up beautifully, and the ground cannot cause a fumble. That is a good call. Just an unfortunate break for Nevada. First and 10 at the 38. Louisiana Tech keeps the ball and keeps the drive alive. We don't keep tackles, but Deshaun Miles with another. He's waging a one-man war against Tech. Play action again. Mackey going deep on a post. Oh, what a play. Good defensive play against Mackey. There's a challenge, and the Wolfpack defense is up to it. He was the only guy in the pattern that time. The Wolfpack had four defensive backs back there. Jack uh, Mackey just got behind Hassan that time, and Hassan used his speed to catch up on that wobbly duck. And Hassan did a great job of getting his arms in there, and the ball just went off the fingertips of Mackey. We've seen Mackey make that catch before. Yeah, a lot of people have seen him make it too frequently. Second and 10. We're tied at 28. Clock stopped in the third quarter, 352. Boy, a 
Again, the Wolfpack had that one sniffed out. And Tawan Hall looked up maybe a little bit late, but that one hit him right in the hands. All out blitz. They sent all three linebackers that time and forced Martin to throw a little bit sooner than he wanted to. And that one looked like it went right off Tawan Hall's hand. <laughs> he wasn't expecting it. It hit him right in the gun sights. We haven't mentioned Garnett Overby, or we mentioned the fact that he hasn't been in there. He just came in the lineup. So let's see if Nevada, are they going with their nickel package? Nope. Overby's just in. Third and ten. What are the Bulldogs got in their bag of tricks this time? On a fly pattern, some tangled feet, but Geiger saying the receiver ran into me. He did. If, it, if anything, that was offensive pass interference. Dean Jackson ran into Mike Geider. Geider with perfect coverage that time. And we'll see it again here as Martin had to throw it a little quick as Tawan Hall was there again. And oh. Jackson shoves him in the lower back. That's offensive pass interference, if anything. Yes, you're absolutely correct. There is no doubt about that. And Joe Ray, you're not right about it. Your man ran up his back. Mike Guider started this game slowly, but he has come on quickly. He's impressed me here in the second quarter and third quarter of this football game. Mike Guider had a lot of pressure put on him today to perform, and he has. There was a little bit of criticism. Uh, people thought that maybe Guider should have knocked that one-handed catch down that Mackey made at the other end of the field. Delay of game against Louisiana Tech. They let the, the play clock run down to zero, and that just puts him in better position for the punt get back to my point but Guider again when I think when the coaches go back and analyze that play and look at it, it, it technically Guider did everything perfectly this time he doesn't give the receiver the inside and he's entitled to that part of the field oh absolutely I don't think anyone was going to catch that football it looked like it was overthrown anyway but Guider with perfect position that time and the Wolfpack's going to get the ball back now with 342 remaining here in the third quarter tie ball game 28th Kane, look at his average today on the year. He's been averaging 36, but he has had a hot foot. Pack with two men back. Kane going to angle it. And the Wolfpack's going to just let that one go in the end zone and out. So they'll start again at the 20-yard line. The third time in this quarter, in this third quarter, that they will start at their 20-yard line. They scored once. They fumbled it away a second time when it looked like they were going in again. We haven't talked a lot about the magnitude of this football game. Wolfpack is 1-0 in the Big West. They need this game desperately if they want to win the Big West Championship. They can, they can still win the championship without this game, but it, the road is a lot easier if they beat Louisiana Tech. Absolutely, and Tech is 1-2, so their, their odds are, are slim. That's in league play. They're 4-3 overall. Pacific is 1-0 on the season. Nevada's got them in a couple of weeks, uh, what, three weeks. Pack starts out on the ground. Wilson running hard again. Boy, see him cover that ball with both hands? He's over 160 yards rushing on the afternoon. 162 for Ernie Wilson, approaching that 200-yard mark. Go back to the comment we made much earlier about one of those kind of backs. The more you give him the ball, the better he gets. Great job of blocking by the wide receivers out here in front of him. Cornell West getting a block for him. And Boy, you know how close that came to going again on the surface? Maxwell, backside pressure, boy, just didn't have his arm coming forward. Rockwood let his man get around him. And big number 70, not pleased about that. Max did not see the pressure coming from his backside. Dewan Washington from the right side of your screen, number 14, weighs only 190 pounds. The guy he went against, Mike Rockwood, weighs 320 pounds. The weight difference didn't matter that time. The quickness did. Washington used his superior quickness to get around the giant Mike Rockwood and he jogged off the field, he got hurt on the play. Second and 10, pack at there, 32. Pressure again on Max, sidearm delivery. Wilson, so wide open, he didn't believe it. He'll be short of the first down at the 41. Barely, by a half a yard. That'll bring up third and short for the Wolfpack. Believe it or not, we had so many points scored in the first half. We've had a touchdown from each side in this half and a two-point conversion, and we're dead even. Mike just shot put that one out to Wilson. He was so wide open. He felt the pressure coming up the middle from Diedrich Johnson and knew he had to get rid of it or be sacked. And Johnson or Wilson was so wide open, he was able to get almost enough yardage for the first down. He's shy by about a half a yard. Timeout on the field. Officials are taking it. And uh, you notice Matt Kelly 
The backup tight end, 89, has just come on the field. You know, one thing, we talk about Maxwell and Van Dyke and uh, Kenny Miner, who's not in there today, but all the seniors, and the, the Wolfpack has a, a wealth of talent in the seniors. But, Dean, I don't know if you looked at the program recently. I just did on the flight here. As we get a look at it, let's see how short they are. Just inches. Nevada has 81 players out for football. 43 of those are underclass freshmen or sophomores. 25 of the 43 are freshmen. So when you look around, you, you see the talent, you see the headline guys, but what you have to realize, this is really a young team that Chris Holt is building back up. There he is on the sideline. They're, they're never easy for him, these Saturdays. Maxwell, quarterback keep. Oh, second, third, and fourth effort will get that. Great Look at LeGraff. By Maxwell. You see LeGraff, 74 on the ground. Looked like they were having a tag team match down there. <laughs> The graph, and they still, I don't think, have unstacked those guys. Cooper. There he is, 74. Last guy to get up. Maxwell, 6'4", 200 pounds, gets the snap from Hadwick, and then feels along the line for any sort of an opening. He goes a little bit left. Nothing's there. It's all crammed up. He stutter steps to the right and falls forward and gets the first down. And while we were looking at that, we've got flags all over the field. I think they're going to call a personal foul, maybe offsetting, one on each team. Well, Here's the call. Unsportsmanlike conduct against Louisiana Tech. They'll add an extra 15 yards onto that play, and the Wolfpack, as a result, will move into Tech territory. Steve Johnson is a guy who is in the doghouse right now of Joe Raymond Peace as we had the Marcel Marceau version of the penalty. So wherever it was, but uh, I would think that down in that stack, Johnson going against LeGraff is the explanation to the head coach. There was some pushing, and, and, and Graf, uh, LeGraff retaliated, but uh, whatever the official saw, he thought that certainly Johnson was the instigator. We saw some extracurricular stuff going on after that play, and that's what they called it on. Tech has been penalized six times for 45 yards in this ballgame, and Nevada's got something going. First to 10 for the 42. I tell you, you don't want to be going anywhere because right here on News Channel 8, after the football game, game one of the World Series. Stay tuned. We'll have it for you. You might have to be a little patient because we're sticking right here. This is a tie ball game at 28, 226 remaining in the third quarter but we'll pick up the baseball game right after this football contest. I was uh, this morning having a cup of coffee with Chris Alton, joking about it. I said, Chris, you know, I don't remember when you guys have played a four-hour game and News Channel 8, ABC affiliate has that, uh, that World Series thing, that obligation. He said, don't worry about it. Baseball's a slow game. I said, you can't miss very much. <laughs> Sounds like Chris. Yeah, it does. Wilson. What a hit by Smith, but Wilson just shakes it off and gets three more yards. Steve McHenry did a nice job of blocking that time to seal out the inside to get Ernie Wilson around the right side, gain of five. You can hear the hit. That's what I like about this ball game. One-on-one, -on -one, you can hear them. It is a very physical contest. We've seen a lot of guys come off onto the sidelines and get 10 to 2. Wilson, 26 carries, 173 yards. That's exactly the amount of yardage he had coming in. Hmm. Maxwell. McHenry with a fingertip catch. And Steve gets another five. He was at the 22. He'll go down at the 17. After the catch, he packs on five more. Super job by Mike Maxwell that time as the pocket began to collapse around him. He had the presence of mind to hang in there long enough for McHenry to finish his route. McHenry, another great job of faking this one, <laughs> bringing it back inside. They expect him to go out of bounds at that play, but he turns it inside and gets an extra seven yards. 35, Brody Clark, the outside linebacker, makes a stop. There you get a shot at the tight end. Wide receiver slash blocker, Steve McHenry. Wilson somehow got through the initial charge and then is dropped by Eric Starks. You know, Van Dyke has caught 11 balls for 146 yards, but Maxwell has spread the wealth around. McHenry has six catches for 105 yards. I had a conversation this last week with, with Chris Alton. He was talking about quarterbacks because he's had a wealth of them. You know, go back to Eric Beavers, one of his favorites, and then Chris Vargas, and he said, not saying anything, denigrate any of my quarterbacks, he said, but Mike Maxwell is the smartest one I've ever had. Max trying to get out of trouble. Finds the open Wilson. 
Oh, you heard that hit. Shane Kerrigan, who was injured early, has played a lot after that injury. Went to the sideline and came back, but he laid a blow on Wilson that Wilson ricocheted off. Bernie Wilson getting the start today because Ken Miner out with that sprained right ankle. And look at Maxwell doing a great job of getting out of the grasp there and then just finds Ernie Wilson the presence of mind to look for the open receiver. A little safety valve over there. And Wilson doesn't go down after the initial hit. He escapes and gets an extra yard. And he's only a yard shy of the first down. Now listen to it with the, re the real speed with the sound. That, that wasn't a collision. That's the end of the third quarter. The game is tied at 28. We'll be back to Ruston, Louisiana. Stay with us. Well, we're back for the uh, fourth quarter. 15 minutes of football remaining. We have been told that uh, Steve Johnson has been ejected from this ball game. He got that 15-yard penalty for that personal foul, and he will sit and watch the rest of the homecoming game. Mike Maxwell has completed more than two-thirds of his passes, 26 of 38, for 361 yards. Remember, Mike Maxwell leads the nation in total offense, averaging 387 yards a contest, and he almost has that through three quarters here. Well, in the last couple of ball games, Max's numbers, his percentage is even better, but on the year, Dana, he's completed two-thirds, 67%. Coming into this afternoon's game, he uh, connected on 177 of 265. There's the guy that uh, got the tongue lashing when he went to the sideline, Steve Johnson, and whatever caused the anger, it's caused him to sit out the rest of this one. And it's been a part of this drive. The unsportsmanlike conduct penalty added 15 yards to the Wolfpack drive. Pack with third and a yard to go at the nine yard line. Maxwell with a heavy hard count, trying to draw the defense. Looks up and he's got Wilkins again on one of those quick look in passes. Wilkins looked up and the ball is in his face. I don't understand the coverage by Louisiana Tech that time. Eric Starks was on Wilkins in the slot that time and Starks is in the end zone. Remember the ball's at the 10 yard line. He gave him more than a 10 yard cushion when they needed one yard for third down. Maxwell made the perfect read at the line of scrimmage. Wilkins was wide open. The corner Crockett is the guy who ends up making the tackle, but Starks is yeah. number 44. Crockett had a responsibility. I believe he had Cornell West on the left side right there. He did. You're absolutely right. He had the wide man, and Starks blew the play. You're absolutely right. First and goal from the four. Flag down. Wilson got to the goal line. No touchdown. I'll take that back. It was not Wilson. It was uh, Dennison Dawson, right? He's coming back. Dawson got into the end zone and there was no signal of a touchdown, which says to me the penalty is against Nevada. Legal procedure. Somebody who uh, I certainly didn't see was moving. Conversation continues down there. It's uh, spirited between the two teams. And you see the penalty again. The Wolfpack giving a little more room. So Dawson will come out and West will come back in. We'll take a look and maybe uh, watch it at home with us. Maybe you see something we don't. Didn't see it. No. Nope. Didn't see it on that replay. Crowd, the 18,000 plus, again responding. Nevada with a first and goal. But I saw that one. <laughs> Matt Kelly was in the secondary and everybody else was standing around. You know, it's possible that Matt missed the count. It's also possible that the crowd got a little bit raucous there and he couldn't hear the snap count from Mike Maxwell that time. Doesn't seem that loud, though. Kelly feels bad enough. Bob Cooper is talking in his air hole. And then we have to go and isolate him. We get a shot of the offensive line, and if you notice a silver strip down the middle of the helmet, that's called a striker award means you grade out very high, and there you get a good look at one. Jeff Hadwick, the offensive center, number 60. Darren Thorpe, the strong side tackle, where's the other one? And Deshaun Miles on defense, the only three that have them. Still first down, Maxwell. Going for McHenry, good defensive play by Myron Smith. Got a hand in and knocked it away. Smith almost picked that one off that time. 
Max didn't look real steady, didn't look like he wanted to deliver it, and that's the time you throw it away. He tried to force it in. Let's see what Maxwell saw right from behind him. And he threw it just a little bit behind McHenry. He was open by a step, but he threw it behind it, which gave Smith a chance to break up the pass. It's first and goal from the, or second and goal from the 14-yard line. Again, Maxwell with time and throws a full touchdown. McHenry hits him. Steve McHenry with a big smile on his face, and why not? And Nevada scores 18 seconds into the fourth quarter to take a six-point lead pending the extra point and a little bit of relief on Chris Alt's face right there. Maxwell gunned that one in there, and I don't know. Boy, did he rifle that one in. He underthrew the last pass, but that one was right on the money. Yeah, McHenry. He's the guy on one knee now. He'll hold for the kicker. As Hadwick with a snap, McHenry puts it down. Shea just gets it inside, but that's all he needs to do is get it between the bars. And the Wolfpack again with a seven-point lead. 14-12 to play in the ball game. We'll be back to Ruston, Louisiana. Stay with us. There you see the score is inverted. It's Nevada with a 35 and uh, Louisiana Tech with a 28. So don't have heart palpitations because Nevada leading by seven. Damon Shea will kick off and we've been advised this game has gone longer than we anticipated. We will join the World Series, but we will join him after the ball game. We'll join it in progress. So Damon Shea will kick off. End over end job that will be taken at the seven yard line. And out to the 20. And for you baseball fans out there, the first pitch in the World Series is not expected until about 4.25 this afternoon. So we still have another half an hour or so before the first pitch of that ball game. And this one being so close, Nevada up by seven with 14 minutes to go. We gotta stay with this one. That's Jonathan Maxwell, another Maxwell in the field that got the return to the 21 yard line. Nevada with 539 yards in total offense after three quarters of play. They're having another huge day. Oh, yeah. You saw the graphic. They went 80 yards. Second time in this second half, they've gone 80 yards for a score. On the ground, that is Ragsdale. And he fights his way over the 25. Lee Ragsdale, 5'9", 185. So he's not a real big guy. He was nifty that time, shifty, trying to find the right hole. Nothing really open up front, but he found his way for five. Jason Mark again, checking the Wolfpack defense. On the ground, Ragsdale ran out of one tackle. And he will have enough for the first down. They'll move the sticks again, but they've been moving them all day long. Sean Miles with a tackle, had uh, 11 last week against Northeast Louisiana. Here's the third quarter stats, brought to you by Commercial Hardware. And the Wolfpack now has outgained Louisiana Tech by 70 yards through three quarters. A total yards, I'm sorry, it's more like 180 yards. At halftime, it was only 80 yards, but in the third quarter, it's 180. Our stats are brought to you by Commercial Hardware and Marietta Tool, where you'll find everything from ace to Z. Again, a counter. This is Thomas, and he is run out of bounds by the Wolfpack, James Johnson. But that time, a little bit something different as Thomas took a stutter step and a counter back to the right side, and on the slant, he got good yardage. David Miller, remember the guy that had his shirt off? And they were working on his shoulder, 96. You see the back as he leans over. He's back in. I told you he didn't want to come out of the ball game. He's a tough guy. Well, he's going to need tough. some aspirin on that plane back, I can tell you that. Tape and aspirin to it. Garnet yeah. Overby is back into the game as well. Yeah. Again, first down. Martin throws for Mackey, who makes the catch, and they hit immediately by Guider, and they're talking to one another. Or at least Mackey's doing some talking. He only got five. That'll bring up second and five. Louisiana Tech trails by seven with 12.45 remaining, and they're not panicking in this game. They've had a number of running plays, which keeps the clock rolling, but they realize there's enough time in this contest that they don't need to panic yet. 
Now, Guider's been put on the bubble, and you saw a good look at him, his, his expression. He looked at the sideline. He has responded. Don't panic. We will get to the World Series. It'll be in progress, but we'll get to it as soon as we possibly can. That's overthrown intended for Mackey. Hassan was closing, but there was no chance to catch that ball. That's right. We'll go to the World Series as soon as this one is over. The first pitch in the World Series is not expected for another half an hour. They're just into the pregame show at 4 o'clock. And uh, this is such a tight ball game with uh, Nevada leading by seven. We can't break away from this one to go to the World Series, but we'll bring we'll bring you the World Series just as soon as this one's done. I think I dropped the screens down on our Reno Air flight back to Reno so we can watch it. I hope so. I doubt it, but I hope so. Third down conversions, eight of 15 for Louisiana Tech. Third and five now. They look for their main, main man, Mackey. What a fingertip grab on an out pattern. Hassan was there, but nothing he could do as Mackey just bent it off to the outside with a great cut. Mackey's got some great wheels, some super speed. That's why he's so hard to cover. Another reason is he's got such soft hands. He makes such great catches, and this one is a little bit overthrown, but again, with the great hands that he has, he's able to make the catch, and Hassan did everything he could just to hang out on this play, make sure he kept him in front of him, but it was enough for the first down. At the Wolfpack 38-yard line, Ragsdale on the ground trying to run laterally. We have a flag down. They got him up around the head. I think Miles got him in the face mask. Looks like that's what they're going to call against Deshaun Miles. Nope. Holding against Louisiana Tech. That's a big call. You know, we've had a, some, some great work today by our camera people and a lot of great shots of the stands. And you know something that's really impressed me about this trip? The people in the stands, it's homecoming, and they obviously respect it because they have come here in shirt and tie, and they are, they are dressed very well for a football game. Football is a big-time deal. Like we said, we, get, we received a, a police escort from Monroe to Ruston today. The buses did. It's about a 40-mile trip. We were doing about 70 miles the whole way. They have lights and sirens going. Everyone on the highway is pulling over, letting the Nevada buses go by, pulling to the stadium in front of everybody. It was amazing. I felt like the president of the United States or something. Yeah, it's been a first-class trip. But other than the guys on the field that banged around, we haven't treated royally. Throw deep for Jackson, and Guider was momentarily beaten, but the ball was thrown wide out of bounds. It looked like Mike Guider stumbled a little bit, which let Jackson get behind him. And at that point, Guider was trying to play catch-up. Did a pretty good job, but the ball was overthrown and out of bounds. See if we can see it here out of the left side. Mike Guider is number nine. He stumbles early on. I don't think you'll get a chance to see that, but you get to see a chance uh, for him to try to catch up on the play, but he wasn't able to do it. Jackson was trying to drag a foot, but he was, as you can see, uh, if you take another look at it from their end zone camera. He is out of bounds if he does make the catch. Second and 19. Martin, trying to get out of trouble, rolls left. I'm not sure where he threw that one, but there was contact. That ball, the thing is, unless it was a hole, that ball was not catchable. Pass interference against Darnell Hassan on the sideline over there, and Joe Raymond Peace, not at Peace right now. He is fired up. His team trails by seven, and Chris Alt waiting for the call. That's what he, exactly. He's saying, and we were talking over one another, excuse me, but he's saying, the ball was not catchable. It was way over his head. It was out of bounds. He said the ball was out of bounds. He's right. It wasn't catchable. But they're going to call pass interference against Hassan over there. Let's see. Yep. Automatic first down. And it was, remember, a second and 19. Those are the kind that hurt. One guy elated, the guy in the red sweater, the guy in the hat with the, the blue and white yelling, what's going on out there? He said, come on, that ball was out of bounds for crying out loud. At the pack 37-yard line, Nevada leading 35-28. They'll step back and the throw to Mackey again. Got a blocker in front. And finally run down from the inside by John Kayua. Mackey did a great job of feeling the block of Dean Jackson in front of him. And he's faster than Kayua. Kayua trying to trail him there on the play, but he's just quicker than Kayua. The McQueen graduate. Yep. John, in the game, the first game we did this year, New Mexico State had those two interceptions. That's right. The first road game of the year. First time, there he is, number 99. They tried him a little bit when they were uncertain about 
their front four. They tried him with his hand down. They thought if they have to, they'll put him in that defensive front. The pitch. Ragsdale found a seam. He's at the 15 and it finally spun out. There seemed to be no way he was going to get through that heavy traffic, but he did. And he got down to the 11. Louisiana Tech knocking on the door again, down by seven. See who doesn't get him. Now, Tenpenny got a hand, but that's about it because somebody was hanging on to Tenpenny. Mm -hmm. And then Johnson with a full gainer tackle out of bounds. First and 10 at the 11-yard line. Justin Tenpenny, 95, teamed up with James Cannon in the middle. Josh Miklos at one end. I didn't catch the other one. Play action. Mark. He don't throw that one away. Yeah. Good coverage by the Wolfpack. They had rotated to their left side defensively. And Jason, it's a pretty wise decision, making sure nobody gets it. Great job by Mart that time of buying himself time with the bootleg. Came around to Juan Hall, the left hand on that on that play, bid on it, went inside. Martin got outside, had plenty of time, but no one was open. The defensive secondary that time did a super job, and there's a look of concern on that man's face. Second and ten. Ball still at the 11-yard line. Martin wants to throw for it. He, again, he threw it away, and let's see what these flags are about. I think he wanted to go for his tight end, Bradley, who was trying to get in the, in the pattern but could not get loose. This could be a critical call here. They throw it in the direction of holding. And remember... Yep, if it's if it's offensive, it's a loss of down. Exactly what that signal means, the hand on top of the hat, loss of down. Offensive pass interference. So the noose gets a little bit tighter with 11-01 to play. Joe Ray with a chaw, he's been working that all afternoon. Well, the University of Pacific is no longer 1-0. They're losing at Southwestern Louisiana 31 to nothing in the fourth quarter. Chris Alt breathing a little bit easier. So move the ball all the way back to the 26. Oh, that's the next ball game. It'll be back in Reno. The revival of the warfare between the North and South. Still about 4,000 tickets left for that contest, but I'd get on it early. That game could sell out. That's, that's going to be a lot of fun next week. It's yeah. going to be packed. It's going to be rocking and rolling at Mackey as Nevada's out for revenge. A no-back backfield. Four receivers. They throw a flare to Mackey. He runs through people. He has got excellent speed. Finally brought down. I think Overby was the one who got him. Yeah, it is Garnett. It's going to bring up a third down now for Louisiana Tech with 10.43 left to go. And they run this play to perfection today as Chad Mackey just gets it in the flat. They give him room to run, give him a couple blockers out front, and that's a dangerous combination. Nice block on the number 30, Deshaun Miles. You don't take him out of plays very often. Mackey seems to be hurting a little bit with a grimace, but he's out, so he's not on the field. Mark. The corner of the end zone, and uh, no way. That time, the wide receiver wanted to come back. Spencer Hurd wanted to come back to the ball, and Johnson was right behind him. And they'll bring on Marty Kent, the place kicker, to try a short field goal. This will be a 28-yarder from the left hash mark. Tech down by seven with 10-16 remaining in this contest. This will pull them within four. Watch out for the fake in this situation. Spotted at the 18-yard line, so add 10 of the end zone. The right-footed Kent getting set, and uh, we have a football on the field. Right. Not the one we're playing with. That football just wanted to get into the game. Kent has uh, made three-quarters of his field goals, so he's been accurate. Look at the concentration. He's not looking at anything but the spot. As far as he's concerned, there's a ball and himself out there. That kick is right down the middle. So he has narrowed it. It's a 35-31 game. 10-12 to play. We'll return to Rustin, Louisiana. Stay with us. Here in 
Preston, Louisiana, the home guys, the Bulldogs, are about to kick off. This guy, Marty Kent, just tapped on a 28-yard field goal. He will get set to kick a deep to Alex Van Dyke. Band across the way celebrating a little homecoming music. This one is going to come up far short. Oscar Galloway will take it to 19, the freshman. And Oscar powers it all the way to the 35. So the battle with great field position, 65 yards away. Dane and I were talking during that timeout, and I couldn't agree with you anymore, Mr. Wagner. This is a very important drive for the pack. If they get points, then it makes it real tough on the dogs. Especially a touchdown. If they can take some time off the clock, only 10 minutes remaining in the game, they could take some time off, score a touchdown, and go back up in this contest by 11 points. They should seal the victory. The field goal, 14 plays, 68 yards, and then Kemp, as we said, converted. On the ground, Nevada comes left. Wilson hangs on and gets a very tough three. Lance Reed, the middle linebacker, drags him down. A lot of guys have been banged up in this game, and guard Brandon Legraff, starting guard Brandon Legraff, is out of the game. Keith Rogers, little used junior, is now in the game at guard for Nevada. Number 25, Texas Tech, 31. Clayton Lopez, who is a grad assistant this year, talking to the guys. He was back there last year. He knows. He's talking to those guys. The secondary, over being Holman, you see. You see Givens, who has not played other than special teams this afternoon. Max to throw on second and seven. Completes to Wilkins. He'll be a yard short of the first down. Control pass against Reed makes the stop along with Starks. Clock continues to run, 9-13 and counting. Yep, if you're a Bulldog fan, you hope it slows up a little bit. If you're a Wolfpack fan, you hope it increases its tempo. Matt Kelly back onto the field. Demon Wilkins comes off. So Nevada looking at uh, two tight ends here. Maxwell, the quarterback keeper, second time this afternoon on short yardage. He has gotten the first down. Reminder again, uh, well, if the Wolfpack should be fortunate enough to go on and score, we might leave this ball game if, if, if the outcome has been determined because right now the World Series has just started, but we will get to that in progress, so bear with us. Actually, they're only in the pregame show at the World Series. They still haven't had the first pitch. That's still 10 or 15 minutes away, so you shouldn't miss too much of the World Series action. The Wolfpack in a tight one here in Reston, Louisiana, 35-31. They only lead by four. We're keeping it here. They go with their four receivers. They run the ball almost exclusively out of this set, and that's what Wilson does again, turns the corner. He goes out of bounds and stops the clock, but good positive yardage across midfield. Billy Campfield, one of the first guys to go greet him. You see Billy on the left. He was an NFL running back. He knows what it takes to succeed, and he is Ernie Wilson's position coach. Ernie's done a great job this afternoon, a super job. You want him to stay in bounds there to keep the clock running, but he really didn't have much of an opportunity to do that. Cornell West coming off very slowly. We have an injured Bulldog down. And you're right, you talk about Billy Campfield. He played for Philadelphia. That's where I remember him. And what a, what a better guy to learn from. When he says something, you know where he's coming from, coming from a, a real uh, position of authority and experience. If that's 40-44, it's the free safety Eric Starks who's down. Wilson, 29 carries, 186 yards, and there he is. He gets his ankle right in front of Ernie Wilson's ankle. That's Stark, so he twisted his right ankle. Hmm. And you know it must be hurt. That, that's great camera work for our guys to get that because these guys have their ankles heavily taped to protect against something like that. So when you turn it over that severely, you know it's trouble. They'll get ice on it as soon as they possibly can. Demon Wilkins, another solid day for Nevada. Six catches, 67 yards, and a touchdown. And it looks like he's all right. He's jogging yeah. off. He, You know, the thing is, stay active, stay moving, yep. and uh, you keep the swelling down a little bit. You Once you sit too long, then it starts to puff up on you, so leave that shoe on. They may even retape it. We might see more of Starks. There's 827 still to play. Nevada leading by a very... Precious four points, and uh, look at Chris Kalakis up there. He's the guy with his foot on the windowsill. Oh, what a hit. Wow. Wilson at the line of scrimmage. Mr. Wilson, meet Mr. Smith. We talked about the linebackers for Louisiana Tech being a little undersized. Myron Smith at 6'1", 202 pounds, the sophomore, but he laid the lumber that time to Ernie Wilson for no gain. So that brings up a critical third down now for Nevada. Nevada's made 7 of 11. Just nothing open. 
as the linebacker did what he should. He filled the gap. Third and three. A little swing pass. Wilson. Second effort, and a flag is down. He's across the stick. But the only thing I can surmise where the flag came from, it had to be a face mask. It might have been a holding on the wide receiver out there, the guy who was blocking number three, Shannon Jenkins. Might have been a hold out there, but we'll see the referee. And it is holding Boy, you're against right. the University of Nevada. The wide receiver, I didn't catch a number on that side, was holding the linebacker, number three, Shannon Jenkins, trying to spring Wilson for the first down, and that's going to cost him 10 yards from the spot of the foul. That'll bring up third and 10 now. Chris Ald acknowledging the official, telling him to hold him, but you could just tell by the expression on his face, he's saying, we made it. What else now? What, what could happen now? But you're right, Dana, that was a hole that I certainly didn't see. 7.42 remaining in the contest. Nevada up 35 to 31. The Tech Bulldogs have lost their last two homecoming games. And before that, I think they'd won 19 of 20. So they've had a lot of success here at homecoming in Ruston. Last two years, you mentioned they did lose. They lost to uh, Southwestern Louisiana last year, 13-3. The previous year, they lost to UNLV, 28-23. So they want to reverse that trend. And Nevada, of course, wants to go home to play their arch rival, UNLV, next week. And they want to go home with an unblemished conference record. Maxwell, third and 12 from his own 45. On the run, the throw, the catch is made. He got enough. Van Dyke got enough for the first down. Are they going to give him forward progress? Well, let's see. I don't see anybody down there marking it. No, they're going to bring it back to where he was pushed back. No. They did not give him forward progress, Dana. Nevada will come up with a fourth down. Well, you don't expect to get all the calls on the road, but you like to get the ones that are obvious. Man. Wow. He caught that one in front of the sticks and was pushed back. This is a tough angle to tell because it's from behind Maxwell, so it'll be hard to tell where the sticks are in relation to Van Dyke. But he gets pushed back here, and the reason was they called it because he released from the, the guy, and they said he could have gained more yards because he was free of that guy. McLean with a second punt, bounces and does scamper into the end zone. Gibbons was giving chase. So now it comes down to defense. 6.35 to go in the fourth quarter, and the Bulldogs, 80 yards away, we return. Remind you the score, Nevada 35, Louisiana Tech 31. We are back in Ruston, Louisiana, and time for our Ram Tough play of the game. Let's take a look at that Ram Tough play as we're coming up. It's in the first half, and uh, Van Dyke won a touchdown, but Steve McHenry's the guy, he's the Ram Tough guy. Watch number 87, left side of your screen, he lays the block. On James Crockett, that is our Ram Tough play of the game. Don't forget, drop by Don Weir's Reno Dodge this week and mention our Ram Tough play of the game. Get an extra $425 off the price of any new Dodge truck. Again, great replay, and that was just to catch the play at field level. The important assignment that McHenry had, and we got it all for you. So, 80 yards away. Motion to the left, and again that cutback. Ragshead gets out of bounds at the 31-yard line. Stops the clock with 6.29 to go in this contest. Tech tried to come back. They're down by four. Yep, field goal does them no good. Reminds me a lot of the UNLV game last year, where the defense had to come up big in the end of the game to win the football game for Nevada. They're going to have to do it today. Ragsdale just bounces outside for a gain of 11. Yeah, Lamont Porter leaning the wrong way. Got an arm out, but it wasn't even close to a tackle. So Rags picks up the first down at his own 31. Little three-step drop, and Mackey with a catch and tackled immediately. Hassan, and he got some help from Miles, who was coming quickly. Super job. Mackey now 16 catches, which is a new single-game school record. He set the record last week with 15. Today he has 16, and he has gained 190 yards. Mm. He's a quality receiver. Hey, don't forget, baseball fans, you haven't missed a thing of the World Series. They haven't even thrown the first pitch. They're still in the pregame show. We'll go to the series right after this game. The pitch and Ragsdale coming right again. And that 
time it was it was Garnett Overby who came in, forced the play, the decision to be made by Ragsdale, and then Tawan Hall getting off the line of scrimmage made the stop after a very short game. Garnett Overby, number 13, right side of your screen, forces the play inside, fights off the block, did a super job, it almost looked like a holding. Get a look at Hall. He's a junior, he's one of those guys that'll be back. Third and seven. Clock moving, we've got 520 to play. Nevada, as you see, leading by just four. Martin throws complete to his tight end, the six foot seven, Bradley, and he lumbers, but he doesn't let go of the horse side. It's only his second catch of the game, but what a big one on third and seven. He comes up with a big first down catch. Bradley and Martin went to high school together, along with Dean Jackson at Oak Grove High School, and won a couple of state championships just down the road a piece from from Ruston, Louisiana. Yeah, about 40 miles, we were told. This Bradley kid was recruited by Notre Dame, Michigan, LSU. He's a big time player. Said Horsehide, he looked like a baseball in his hand. He was mint. Martin going for a bundle, going deep to Mackey. They battle for it, but that time Hassan had it sniffed out perfectly. Hassan leads the team with three interceptions this season, going for his fourth. Pass was overthrown, and at that point, the receiver, number four, Chad Backey, became the defensive back. He was trying to prevent Hassan from getting the interception, which would have sealed this contest. Just tell from the body language of Jason Martin, he didn't really want to throw that, but figured when you got a guy with a horseshoe in his pocket like Mackey, who comes down with almost everything you throw up, why not throw it his way? He is an exceptional receiver, like Step Stepford William from uh, Northeast Louisiana. Second and ten at their own 48-yard line. The Bulldogs with it. Again, a little quick pass to Spencer. And he is chased out of bounds after a short game. Spencer Hurd, he gets to the pack 46-yard line. Remember, coming up right after this football game, game one of the World Series. Only four minutes, 38 seconds left in this contest. Wolfpack leads by only four points. In this tight football game, we have to keep it here, but we'll go to the World Series right after this football game. Third and four. Another big third down play. Oh, boy. The tight end Bradley goes to the left side. They tighten the formation. Send the motion man, Jackson Wright. Incomplete. Boy, it looked like Crawford had a... A handful of the receiver before the ball got there. Brings up fourth and four, a critical down. Let's see if they go for it. I say they have to go for it in this situation. Oh, there, there's no question, 433. To hope to get it back is not in the cards. But how Mackey was out for a one play rest. That's what you've got to be thinking if you're silver and blue. How can they not go to number four? They've made, they being Louisiana Tech, they made both of their fourth down attempts so far this afternoon. If they come up dry here, it could be the ball game. Mark for Mackey, who else? He breaks away. Finally run down, what a player. He's inside the five yard line. You gotta know you're going his way. And the fans go crazy. You're right, he's the big play receiver, a 17th catch. With each catch, he sets a new school record and he beats Mike Guider as he runs inside the five yard line. First and goal, and they're only down by four. Clock continues to move. Now, if you're tech, you wanna take a little time. If you're the Wolfpack, you don't wanna take any time. Ragsdale coming right, got a block, spins off, touchdown! Ragsdale, touchdown, Bulldogs! The crowd pleased, it's homecoming, and they're starting to celebrate, but we have a lot more time. So the defense had their chance to win the football game, now the offense will get their chance. Kent is waiting. He wants the try for extra point to make it a three-point difference. Mike Maxwell and Chris Hall talking about what they need to do. Plenty of time. 4.06 remaining in the game. Kent 
this extra point is good, so we have a three-point ball game. We're going to take a timeout. Let our hearts settle. 406, 38-35, Louisiana Tech's lead. We'll be right back. We are back in uh, Ruston, Louisiana. Louisiana Tech Bulldogs now want to send their defense on the field. The Wolfpack has 406 to operate. They need at least three, but I can't imagine Chris Holt going for the tie. Ragsdale, known as a burner, but does a great job to get by James Johnson that time and get into the end zone for the go-ahead score. End over end kick going Van Dyke's way at the five. Made as much as he could out to the 27. They're scrambling for the ball. And Jackson comes up with it. Baccio knocks it out of his hands, and Van Dyke gives him a little bit of a shove. Now, not the time you want to lose your cool. No. If the ball was down, no fumble on the play, and it'll be Nevada ball. It took Louisiana Tech nine plays to go 80 yards, then Rags there with a short run. It took two minutes and 29 seconds to do that. So they went 80 yards at 229. Nevada has 359 with which to work. Remember, a field goal ties it. Yeah, but does that do you any good in the overall standings? Wilson coming left. One has strung it out pretty well, and Wilson will get very short yardage of any. And the crowd comes to life here in Ruston, Louisiana. Wilson fighting his way for the sideline, wanted to get out of bounds to stop the clock, but did not. And the clock continues to run with 3.38 and counting. Remember, we'll go to game one of the World Series right after this ball game. Here's a time in Mike Maxwell's career, and when you look at him, there are no beads of desperation, no beads of sweat of desperation at all. He handles the pressure as well as anybody. Van Dyke has to go off his fingertips, intercepted by Crockett. Crockett out of bounds, and Louisiana has reason to celebrate. We have a flag down. You can see in Max's face, Mike Maxwell, there's some disappointment. As now, James Crockett, it's the first time I've seen Maxwell in two years display some anger and personal foul will be against Louisiana Tech for celebrating. A sportsmanlike conduct, they'll move it back 15 yards. And like so many of his interceptions this year, it wasn't Mike Maxwell's fault. The ball was thrown a little bit high, but Alex Van Dyke makes that catch 19 out of 20 times. Yeah, he saw Lance Reed, 58, coming in his uh, side view mirror, and he pulled his hands away. Watch now. You see his head just turned to the left, pulls his hands away, and Crockett, we talked about Wilkins' one-handed grabs. Crockett with a tremendous control to come away with it with a one hand, and now I would think that Louisiana Tech will protect this one with both hands. Ragsdale. Crawford brings him down. Nevada has two timeouts to use. Exactly, that's just what I was going to mention. They have two timeouts left. Louisiana Tech cannot run out the clock unless they get a first down, and they're not that far away now. They're only about five yards short. So the Pack's got to hope they strip it, come loose. They just, they just flat need a turnover against a team that's plus three in that department. Wolfpack's minus 15 in that department. Not many teams have winning records through seven games of that. Martin goes to the air. Alexander, he was smart. He fell down before going out of bounds. You could see that. He just knelt down. If he goes out of bounds, the clock stops. Smart player. Timeout, Wolfpack. Pack has to use one. You're right. 222 remaining. 35 for the Wolfpack, but they're three short of what they need. Turnovers have absolutely killed the Wolfpack in their two losses this season. And, and it looks like it may do them in again today. Yeah, well, we were talking this week, remember, you and Bob and I were talking about things that, that have affected the Wolfpack. We said, never have I seen a team 4-2 and two that had a minus 12. And now you're going to see a team that's 4-3 and three with a minus 15. And you turn the ball over that many times, you just shouldn't be winning that many games. 
2.22 to go in this contest. Louisiana Tech up by three. There you see the head coach trying to celebrate homecoming for the first time in three years. Louisiana Tech has lost the last two, 13-3 last year, and then two years ago against UNLV, 28-23, and there's still some time to play, 2-22, but maybe they have reason to celebrate and run their record to 5-3. Jason Martin still wants to throw. Up the sideline, incomplete intended for Mackey. Boy, step-for-step -step coverage by Hassan, and I really have to question that. With 2.22 to play, why throw the ball incomplete and stop the clock? Brings up a fourth down. They have run the ball so well on the ground, and look, when he tries to squeeze it in there, I mean, this is an impossible catch. It really is. Now, if you make the completion, you win the ball game for sure. And it looks like Hassan almost got a hand on him. And they're going to go for it, fourth and five. I thought they might even pooch punt it, keep it as deep on the pack as they could. But again, if they make it here, and we have flags down, stop the play. Number 46, the middle linebacker Crawford is pointing at the guys in blue jerseys. And it is procedure against the dogs. see who moves I'm not, I'm not sure I guess it was the offensive center who moved first now remember this game is brought to you by John Esquaga's Nugget and Jones West Ford Chris all pacing the sideline saying hey there's still time to rally you get back in we got two minutes and 15 seconds they've got a fourth and ten Talking to Clayton Lopez, along with Kenny Wilson, his defensive people. And they let the play clock run down. Delay of game against Louisiana Tech gives them a little bit more room to punt the ball now. They will punt the ball away, so Nevada will get one last chance to try and win this ball game. Wow, goes down to that. Look at the guys, the defensive guys. Look at, on the other side, the strategy makers on the other side. Guy in the red shirt is their offensive coordinator, Gary Croton. First year's offensive coordinator, and a big reason that Louisiana Tech is now winning more games than they lost. Jason Kane, who's had an excellent afternoon punting, will come in to do it again. Nevada with twin safeties back at their 10 yard line. Good snap to Kane, right up in his eyes. He hangs it high, hoping to get somebody to down it. It's way out of bounds. Great kick. So no return. We'll see where they spot it at the 10. Nevada's got to go 90 yards. They did it once before. They went 90, they went 89. Jeff Tisdall, the assistant head coach and the offensive coordinator over there. And believe me, those guys know what's on the line. If they have to, they will kick the field goal to tie this, this game up. And the reason being is that everyone in the conference has one loss except for the University of Nevada. So if they tie this ball game, they go one win, zero losses and a tie, and they still control their own destiny to win the Big West Conference. Astute observation, and uh, I would agree with that. Maxwell, middle screen to Van Dyke. Broke one tackle, but they got him from behind. That's the guy, like Mackey, Van Dyke's the guy you want to have his hands on the ball. Well, they shouldn't be dilly-dallying around here. 153 and counting down, only one timeout. They got to get up and get going. Got only three, second and seven. Don't count Wilkins out. Max again, going for a bundle, going for Van Dyke, who's open. He's got it, it's a foot race. Van Dyke's going to go. He's going to score. And the Wolfpack goes 87 yards on a bomb from Mike Maxwell to Van Dyke with a flag. Wait a minute, let's go back downfield. We've got a flag at the 32-yard line. They could call this one back. Both teams have gone to their money men. It's holding against the defense. Did I tell you Mike Maxwell? 
Maxwell didn't have any beads of desperation on his forehead. 131 to go in this game. Don't celebrate too early. Louisiana Tech still has three timeouts left, and they've shown the capability of coming back. Van Dyke on the near side ran a straight fly. Didn't juke, didn't fake just use his superior speed to burn James Crockett. He ran a straight fly pattern. Now you talked about earlier when Chad Mackey from Louisiana Tech made a huge third down catch. How do you let this guy get open? He's the leading receiver in the nation. And they had talked all week about double teaming him no matter where he was. Shane add the extra. We have flags down. 131 still to play. I know the World Series is on but staying with us, how can you get away from this one? What a ball game. Look at Alex Van Dyke. Boy, do you deserve that refreshment. Talk about retribution. This is the guy who let the ball go through his hands for the interception to James Crockett when it looked like Louisiana Tech was going to seal the game. He comes back to make one of the biggest receptions of his career. Last year, he made the biggest play of the season for the Wolfpack against Northern Illinois. The kick is up, and that is good. That's a big point. That's a huge point. Yeah, no field goal doesn't tie anymore. 131 to play. Get back to that Northern Illinois, as Chris Hall characterized this game this week. It was as big as last year's turnaround of the season against the uh, Northern Illinois team that we were back there to do that game. This one is as big because Van Dyke again comes up with a big play. In that game, they needed two touchdowns to win the game and got it in the fourth quarter. Here, it's been a seesaw contest, and just like that, they score an 87-yard touchdown to Alex Van Dyke, who now has 243 yards receiving, 14 catches, two touchdowns. Mike Maxwell now has 484 yards passing, four touchdowns. He's completed more than two-thirds of his passes. Maxwell having another huge day. He already leads the country in passing in, in total offense, and he's only adding to it today. Guys up there are breathing a little bit easier. Notice the windows open. Not the guy on the left. That's defensive coordinator Mike Gilhammer. His night's not done yet. Yeah, he took that cup up, looked like he wanted to sip something, and then thought, no, I'm not going to sip anything now. Two plays, 90 yards. Not hard to figure that out. Van Dyke goes the major portion of it. That ball bounces, and oh, it just didn't get into the, or did it? Oh, it goes across the goal line, they call it. So it'll be at the 20-yard line. The difference is 15 yards. If it goes out of bounds, Tech gets it at the 35. Nevada has not caught a break all night until now. That ball was out. It looked like to me at the half-yard line, and you thought so too. Yeah. Yeah, we'll get another look at uh, Van Dyke, who comes razor close to stepping out of bounds, by the way. Yeah, let's watch his feet. Let's see how close he gets. He just beats Crockett with his speed, and then he turns on the 4-3 speed down the sideline, and he did. He tightroped it down. <laughs> Jason Martin, let's see how much magic he's got in his right arm. Looking for his number one guy, Mackey, overplayed, and Hassan was closing so quickly. I don't know if he got a hand on it or not, but I'm not sure the ball was catchable. Second and ten. 127 to play. We're in Ruston, Louisiana. The defense has a chance to win the ball game again. They had one chance, didn't do it. Now they got another one. Get a look at the graphic, shows you the time and the score. It's all or nothing for the dogs. They've got a touchdown. Field goal does them no good. Again, Martin with time. He's tied in. Brady rumbles to the 39. A late hit by Crawford. Crawford easily could have gotten call for spearing. Boy, did he come in late, but no flag is down. Tech still has three timeouts, but they choose not to call one. 119 and counting. They haven't won, they haven't won the clock yet, but as soon as they do, it'll be 119 and counting. They move the change. Now they will kick it in. Again, Mark throwing underneath the coverage. Completion out of bounds. Jackson. He's at the 49 yard line of the Bulldogs. Well, they're aptly named. They're Bulldogs. They don't go down easy. An update from the World Series. Cleveland leads 1-0 in Game 1. And we will go to Game 1 of the World Series immediately following this contest. Only 1-10 remains, and Louisiana Tech needs a touchdown to win. A field goal does them no good. They have 51 yards to go. Boy, nobody has left this one. 
hearts are in the throats on both sides of the ball. What a game. A draw. That's Thomas. Broke a tackle. And Miles finally drops him at the 31-yard line. Game one still in the first inning. What a huge play right there. 63 seconds to play. The clock is stopped while they move the chains. Nevada has had trouble tackling, especially late in ball games. James Johnson in position and played the Matador there. The Bulldogs, first and 10 at the pack, 32. Up the middle of field is a catch made. Yeah. What a grab! Jackson again, or is that Figaro? Francis Figaro. Wow. Up and down the field. Nevada making it back. Timeout taken. Louisiana Tech. We'll get another good look at this one from the end zone. What a pass and catch. You can't fault the coverage. Hassan was right there. The ball was thrown the only place it could be thrown. Hassan misses it by about a foot. And Figaro makes a great grab. He has his hands under the ball and comes up with it. Let's set the scene. 50 seconds remaining. The battle is 42-38 over Tech. Tech has the ball first and goal at the eight-yard line. Wow. I've seen some in 21 years, Dana, but I cannot remember one to rival with this one. The triple overtimes in one double-A at Mackey Stadium, I mean, those were exciting contests. But not the kind of up-and-down offense that we have seen. This thing has been back and forth and forth and back. <laughs> There's the man of the hour right now. Many players have won the, the mantle of hero this afternoon. Let's see who will win it with 50 seconds left. Two guys with their hearts on their sleeves right now. One hoping they get it, the other one hoping they get it. Huge game for both teams. Up the middle. Ragsdale, he'll get to the one-yard line. Lee Ragsdale to the one. Timeout on the field. Timeout, Louisiana Tech. That surprises me. Didn't think they would go so quickly, 80 yards. They've gone 79. And he almost made it into the end zone. Garnett Overby makes the game-saving hit right there. But they're knocking on the door. Timeout on the field. Jason Martin over on the sideline. Remember, it's second and goal for the half-yard line. 42 seconds left. The ball game's on the line. Second and a yard to go. We have had facial expressions, the ups and downs, the agony of defeat, the exhilaration of victory in both faces of the coaches within the last two minutes. We have had it, and look how far away they are. A foot, a Reebok away. A Reebok away, exactly. Joe Raymond Peace, no stranger to this game. He played professional football. He was a linebacker. The Houston Oilers. Houston Oilers. He played here with Terry Bradshaw. Yep. Bradshaw is one of the graduates of this uh, fine university. Roger Carr, the wide receiver for the then Baltimore Colts, played under Coach Aye, the man that the stadium is named for. Second and a yard away. Thomas! Over the top. Did he get in? Yes, he did. Wow! Flag is down. I think that'll be celebration. That could be a very big penalty. That'll cost 50 on the kick. The flag is lying in the end zone. 39 seconds to go. Nevada with one timeout remaining. Let's see. They will mark the penalty on the kick, not on the extra part. The kick off, not on the extra point. It is for celebrating the new rule this year that's being enforced strictly. So instead of kicking from the 35, Louisiana Tech will kick from the 20. That, that's what the coaches are upset about. At field level, there goes Billy Thomas. Another reason for the resurgence of Louisiana Tech is that offensive line. They did a great job, a line surge right there. Seven plays, they go 80 yards in 52 seconds. 
very reminiscent of last year's UNLV contest. Yeah, a laser quick game. So much offense. This is a big extra point. Marty Kemp, the right footer is set. This kick is up, and you see it, it's good. Once again, Nevada's got to regroup. A field goal ties it. I guess if you've got a trick play, that's a pass, you use it. You don't want Shea to kick it much past 40 yards. That means that the Wolfpack needs to get it down to about the 23-yard line to put him in field goal range. Of course, a touchdown will be better for Nevada. Only 52 seconds ago, the smiles were on other faces in other color jerseys on the opposite side of the field. Here comes the penalty at the 20-yard line. Van Dyke is the deep man once again, remember that. And he broke one against Northern Illinois for 90 yards and a touchdown last season. He's got that super speed. He broke one for 86 yards on Nevada's last possession for a touchdown reception. You know, the other thing is for Tech, you don't dribble it up there because you've got to prevent the field goal. So you've got to kick it as deep as you possibly can. Take your chances. There it is, once again. The only number that's not on there is how long it took. It took 52 seconds. Joe Raymond P said this would be the longest game in NCAA history and just about. We're coming up on three hours, 45 minutes. Van Dyke running laterally. The ball goes out of bounds. So that'll spot it at the 35. No time off the clock with 39 seconds now. The young and old self celebrate here. The kicking team was taken off the field by the youngster who came out to get it and did a cartwheel to get to the kicking team. So where will it be? Will it be at the 35 or will it be further upfield? Because he kicked it out of bounds, so will it be at midfield? Yes, that's where it'll be. Half a field away. They only need 27 yards, about, to get into field goal range. 39 seconds left, down by three, one timeout for Nevada. And the Pack will go with their quads, their four wide receivers. West, Wilkins, McHenry, and Van Dyke. Van Dyke on a comeback. He'll go out of bounds at the 35. They pick up 15. Only seven seconds went off the clock. And they have to respect Van Dyke because of the 86-yard touchdown on the previous possession. So they're going to keep him in front of him and give him a huge cushion. Can they afford to do that? Maybe one more time, but that's it. Nevada still has that timeout as Van Dyke gets out of bounds. 32 seconds remain. The pack stays with their quads. Well, up the seam to McHenry, he's at the 14-yard line. Timeout is taken with 25 seconds remaining. The clock stops to move the chains. I don't know. Nevada takes their last timeout. Nevada takes their last timeout. They do not have any more timeouts. And Louisiana Tech expecting Nevada to go to the sideline so they can get out of bounds and stop the clock. They mix them up, throw it up the middle of the field, and waste their last timeout for good reason. Lance Reed, the middle linebacker, makes the stop. This would be a 30-yard field goal from right here. He has a 32-yarder today. He but I'll tell you one thing. That coaching staff is not thinking field goal right now, 14 yards away. They're thinking touchdown. Oh, absolutely. Damon Shea, perfect 7 for 7 in field goals this season. But this kid has never been put in a pressure situation like this one. This is a kick like any other kick he's ever had in his career. There's some, some lobbying going on right now. Jeff Tisdall talking to head coach Chris Ault about what he wants to do. You have 25 seconds left. That's plenty of time for three more plays if you throw it to the end zone. You either get the touchdown or the incomplete pass. Remember those guys that were so relaxed a few seconds ago? Yep. Relaxation is not right now in the focus of uh, their mind at all. The guy on the left, defensive coordinator Mike Gilhammer, not pleased tonight. I can guarantee you that. He has an excessive headache after this one. And so does Chris Hall. 
Four receivers stay in for the pass. Maxwell going for the corner of the end zone for Wilkins, knocked away. What a defensive play by Parker. Maxwell might have let it up just a little bit softly, a little too soft. You're exactly right. He floated that one a little bit. Wilkins had about five yards, but when the pass floated, it gave Parker time to catch up to the pass and knock it away. Parker on the right side of your screen is number one. He is behind the play, but he has time to catch up because the pass didn't get there in time. If he'd thrown it over his shoulder, it would have been six. Wilkins darn near got it in the second effort. Maxwell again. In the end zone, touchdown. The same guy. resurrected again as a hero but the guy you got to think about is Mike Maxwell he doesn't have a nervous bone in his body and Nevada will not get a flag on this play for celebrating they're a disciplined team under Chris Holt and there's no way in the world they'll draw the same kind of penalty that Louisiana Tech did Wow Max it takes him two to get in the end zone there he is there's Van Dyke Hey, it's not over. No, no, we have 14 seconds. We can have two more scores. Again, Shea. He came in with 30 in a row. He is still with a streak going. And Nevada, I, I'm almost speechless. So many times we have seen this happen. Update from the World Series. Top of the second inning. Still 1-0 Indians. We will go to that game immediately following the final play. We'll give you the final score and we'll send it right to the World Series in progress. Maxwell, for the first time, has taken his hat off. He, he just stays focused and concentrates and he leaves his hat on, but now look at his numbers. Well, this is Van Dyke. 16 catches, 271 yards, three touchdowns. He might be playing on Sundays. Look at Maxwell. He doesn't often show that kind of emotion. What's up? And the reason is it looked like it was over. It looked like the game was in the bank for Louisiana Tech. To everybody but Mike Maxwell. And that's what Chris Hall's talking about. He said this guy is, again, he's had some outstanding quarterbacks, but he said he's so intelligent that to him, if there's a second left, they're going to win the game. And Maxwell's going to find a way. There he is, the senior quarterback, took over last year for Chris Vargas. He has completed 35 of 60 attempts. 535 yards, five touchdowns. He threw for seven touchdowns last week, five this week, and here comes the kick. Puckett will be at a six. Looking, weaving, goes to the 25, seven seconds. Now you got to play some center field, and you got to find out where Chad Mackey is. Nevada leading 49-45. And Mike Maxwell is three yards behind Chris Vargas for the single game passing yardage. 538 yards, Vargas' single game record. Maxwell just five behind. We get another look at it. On a line and wide open. Inside Crockett for the touchdown. Look at Steve McHenry. This could be the last play. As he throws, it'll go incomplete. We've got two seconds left. What a giant play by Julian Yearwood. One Number last 53. play. One yep. final play, unless it ends, unless the defense has a penalty, the game can't end on a defensive penalty, but this will be the last play of the ball game, and we'll send you right to the World Series right after this. Watch Yearwood. And the ball falls harmlessly. 75 yards away. There will be no Arkansas State game in this one. You no. were there two seasons ago. You're right. right. Choice for the Bulldogs. That is a final timeout for the Bulldogs. The Dogs have taken a timeout with two seconds remaining. They're in no hurry to see the World Series. And the reason I say there will be no Arkansas State game is because Louisiana Tech has it at their own 25, and James Johnson is playing deep center field at the other 35-yard line. No one's getting beyond him. We'll see you again in two weeks as the Wolfpack goes to Logan, Utah to play the Aggies at Utah State. Next week, they're at home against UNLV. That's an early game in Logan. 
I'm glad it's not a night game. So am I. It can get very oh. cold in Logan in November. That game will be on at 11 o'clock in the morning, Pacific time. Alex Van Dyke. He and his compatriots have reason to be happy. They'll have a lot more reason in two seconds. Joe Ray Peace. Again, the emotions, the swing from side to line to sideline. Back across. He had this one wrapped up 42 seconds ago. And then the penalty, the celebration penalty hurt him dearly. Yeah, I hate to rain on your parade here, or that Nevada's parade, but they still have some major concerns on defense. Big time. Even though it went the way it is, people are going to debate about it. I thought the defense. At times, the, the, the corners played so well. There's Kenny Miner. Even though he didn't play, he's happy about the outcome right now. Didn't play with that. Uh, they found a new one back there, Guider. Yeah. I, I thought he was tough. I agree, and I think Guider will start the rest of the way out. We didn't see Gibbons at all at corner tonight. Where's Mackey? He's in the slot. At the top of your screen, he's in the middle. Number four. Martin going upfield. And now it's knocked down. The game's over. Nevada winning at 49-45. They will celebrate near midfield. They will head for the airport. It's going to be a joyous trip back to Reno. We're expected to get in about 9.45 Pacific time tonight. And this celebration is going to go on as we get in the air and get out of here. Unwell, unreal. Ken Wilson there, one of the defensive coaches, very happy. Probably relieved is more like it. Joe yeah. Raymond Peace can't believe this one slipped away. They lost a game last week at Pacific. Very reminiscent of this one. With 38 seconds. Final score, Nevada 45, Louisiana Tech 45.